Good evening and welcome to Alumni Stadium in First Dover, home Delaware. game, and their fans Tonight's are ready for this one. They're, they're, they're ready to come out and see their team play well on this Saturday night. And the I see a whole lot of bodies of on the other Carolina side there, North Carolina. Hello, everyone. I'm Gary Lang, and I'm joined by Mike Walker. At life, because games end. But life keeps on going. The MIAC, educating student athletes for the game of life. First time in a number of years for a Delaware State game. Uh, they installed the lights uh, about a dozen years ago and have used them sparingly. You know, they've been on the road and scheduled a lot of games, uh, especially at the beginning of the season with superior talent. And, you know, the mindset behind that was they were hoping that the program uh, would grow as a result of uh, facing some of these, you know, top 10, top 20 teams nationally. But Delaware State has struggled. And I think Coach Milstead has realized that they kind of start from scratch a little bit. They've got to take it back to the drawing board. So you're going to see them not only slow the game down today, uh, but I think going forward, he's going to look to slow this program down a little bit, allow it to catch up, allow it to kind of rejuvenate itself, go out there and find some talent to support the talent that's emerging, right, on the team right now. And I think, you know, with his leadership, the future looks very bright here at Delaware State. Another very logical reason for this game being played in the evening uh, is that this is NASCAR weekend in Dover, Delaware, and the Dover International Speedway is directly across Route 13 from Delaware State University. So trying to have a football game at the same time as the Saturday events over there, they ended about the time people were maybe arriving for this football game. So you didn't have that conflict with traffic and parking and just a, a general discomfort in the area with two sporting events happening essentially within a mile of each other. Just jam-packed, you know, Dover Downs is literally across the street from Delaware State University. So, you know, whenever these two uh, institutions decide uh, to get together uh, and, and do what they do, NASCAR hosting a race, Dell State playing a football game, it just concentrates a whole lot of bodies in a very small area of the town. The Hornets setting, uh, getting ready to send their uh, kickoff return team onto the field. They're in the red as you see them on the sideline and across the field. North Carolina A&T in white uniforms with dark numerals, black helmets with the A&T logo. Delaware State in their red uniforms with the white numerals and red helmets. And we're finally ready to get this one underway, kicking off for A&T. Kickoff by Davis Rogers for A&T. The deep man for Delaware State is Bryson Aline. He stands at his five-yard line. And this one is underway from Dover. Aline at the four. Takes it up the far side hash mark. Cuts it out to the right side. Across the 20, across the 30-yard line. Out across almost to the 40-yard line. And a good return to set things up by Bryson Aline in the opening kickoff. That's how you start a game off. And this is one of those guys who returned the kickoff last week for a touchdown. So I'm sure he's excited every time that he gets an opportunity to put his hands on the ball. But hopefully he won't be having to return too many kickoffs today. Bryson Aline brings it out to the 38-yard line, a good 34-yard return on the opening kickoff. Keenan Black now brings his team out. They immediately go to the shotgun formation. Single back in the backfield will be Aline. They split out two receivers wide on the right side, one on the short side here on the near side. The give is to Aline, tries to turn the corner to the right side, hit at the 35-yard line, breaks away from a tackle and decides uh, he's able to get forward for a yard, but it's going to be a two-yard loss on the play. Look like defensive end Dow Johnson Jr. on that tackle. At least uh, Bryson Aline doing a good job of breaking the initial tackle, but again, that good pursuit 
uh, out of the Aggies, tackles him for a short loss on that play. The officials say Aline got uh, to the 37-yard line, so it's a loss of only a yard on the play. Second down and 11. Again, lone back in the backfield behind the quarterback, Keenan Black. And hold on, we have our first penalty marker of the game. And this is going to be on the Hornets. The head linesman, Stephen Green, throwing the flag. And it's going to be an illegal procedure, setting the Hornets back five yards. It'll still be second down, but it will be second down and 16. Now Black from the gun. Short pass, right side, complete. It's going to get maybe about a yard on the reception. It's Trey Gross, the wide receiver. They're going to say he dropped that, Gary. It looked like him directly in the hand. So Gross was looking to make something happen before he caught the ball, and he just taps himself on the head, indicating that that's his mistake. So Gross dropping that one. It brings up now third down and 16 for Delaware State as they want to get something going early in this football game, try to establish some kind of a tempo move the ball downfield keenan black with the long snap count here on third down looks left side rolls to the left side now pulls it down he's going to run with the football across the 40 to the 45 yard line dives forward to the 46 yard line it's going to come up two yards short of the first down on the play good decision by black couldn't find anybody open and pressure was there right good job by the aggies defensive line of getting through the offensive line for Dell State and putting pressure on Black. But Black shows you why he's so dangerous and probably the better choice as far as the quarterback position is concerned. His ability to run is second to none in this conference. Fidel Romo Martinez is standing at his 31-yard line to return to receive the snap to punt. North Carolina A&T apparently doesn't believe it. They don't have a return man back there. And a good punt by Romo Martinez takes a bounce to the side and will go out of bounds. They're going to mark it at the 10-yard line. That's a great punt. It sure is. He pinned them deep on their side of the ball. So the Delaware State defense is going to have a, a pretty good opportunity to be real aggressive, uh, put some pressure on this Aggie offense, and try to dictate the pace of this game. For the Aggies, Lamar Renard will be the starting quarterback. On the season, a 109.2 efficiency rating as a passer. 639 yards uh, on the season, only completing 50% of his passes. So, I mean, this is a guy who's got a strong arm, but he's not necessarily the most accurate passer in the conference. Kristen Bernard from the gun at the five-yard line, standing, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, throws the quick out on the left side, complete. And Dell State Tackler is there to make the stop at around the 16 or 17 yard line. And the reception made. Looked like Ron Hunt on that reception, number 81. Brings up second down and three. Again, that quick out on the left side, this time fighting for yardage. And a bunch of Hornets come in and help out on the tackle. Richie Kettles, who's listed on the roster as a defensive back, lined up as a wide receiver on that one and caught that pass. Good for a first down at the 20-yard line. Back-to-back -back challenges uh, on Kiwan Selby's side of the ball. They're going to be real aggressive at going at him. Two plays right in that same area to start off the game. Now the first running play off the left tackle. One broken tackle and ridden out of bounds on a good tackle. Brian Cavacante has been a leader on that defense for Delaware State, making the stop after a gain of about seven yards. Caught right on the run, Cavacante on the tackle, and again, that's good, aggressive tackling by Brian Cavacante. He sends messages when he makes tackles. Markel Cartwright, the runner on that play. He's in the backfield, he'll get it again, goes to the left side, trying to get out over tackle again, manages to get forward to the 29-yard line, a pickup of two, brings up third down for the Aggies. I mean, that's good running inside of the tackles by Cartwright. He recognized what the situation was. Uh, he was definitely um, running as hard as he could north and south and it puts them in a pretty good situation. It's third and short, one of those uh, distances where they have an option to pass or run the ball. Now Cartwright moves, lines up in the slot, shifts to the left side as he'll cover the line on that left side. 
He goes in motion. Quarterback Reynard hands off. It'll be a loss of yardage for the Aggies, and this Hornet defense stops North Carolina A&T on a critical third down. They brought in Kyle Carter uh, for the wildcat snap. He's a reserve quarterback. He might be the better runner, but on that particular play, Delaware State was not fooled defensively. The front seven stayed at home and tackled him for a loss on that play. Good defensive uh, set for Delaware State University. The good punt out of bounds at the 10 set it up for the Hornets. Made North Carolina A&T work from their own deep territory. Couldn't get out past the 30-yard line. Michael Rivers with a nice punt. Fair catch called for and made by Keenan Black at, at Bryson Aline at his own 24-yard line. And we have our first break in the action. We'll take a timeout on the field. This is HSRN, the voice of HBCU Sports, and you're watching MEAC Football on ESPN3. That's going to be on Sports Center. Welcome back to Alumni Stadium in Dover, Delaware. No score here in the first quarter as Delaware State starts their second possession of the game. And this, a running play, Bryson Aline up to his 23-yard line on the carry. That's a gain of four to make it second and six. Running on that left side of the line between, between or behind R.J. Moley and Matthew Dirks. They open up some good yardage, some good holes, and allow them to pick up a good four-plus on that run play. Hornets quarterback, Keenan Black. Again, takes the snap, hands it off. They try to fake the handoff, and they'll pitch it out to lean on the right side, breaks one tackle in the backfield, and manages to slip forward across to the 31-yard line. Good running by lean That's a great individual effort. They tried to give it an option look. They wanted to give a Black an opportunity if he saw the flank to take it, but it looked like he engaged the defensive player, so he pitched that ball, and I thought Bryson Aline was going to be tackled for a loss, but again, individual effort and talent allowed him to pick up a couple of yards on that play. Averaging 3.8 yards per carry on the season, and once again, we have the officials and a penalty marker, and this is not good ever for the offense. And it will set the Hornets back. Rather than having third and two, they'll now have third and seven. And again, you know, in their second possession, it's another a series of, of plays where they have another penalty. And this is what Coach Milstead uh, was trying to eradicate uh, this week. He wanted to stop the senseless penalties that keep sh allowing Del State to shoot themselves in the foot. Third down and long yardage now. Black throwing over the head of his intended receiver. He was looking on that play for Teron Selby, the wide receiver on the left side. Just got it way up too high. That brings up fourth down and another punt for Delaware State. Looked like Black might have rushed that pass just a little bit. I think he felt heat that wasn't actually there. And as the game goes on, he'll become uh, a little more comfortable behind that offensive line. But he's got to trust it. He's got to plan his feet, identify his receiver, and throw the ball. He can't assume that the offensive line won't provide protection for him. Fidel Romo Martinez averaging 43.3 yards per punt. Got away a good one on the, in his first time. Put it out of bounds at the Aggies' 10-yard line. And hold on. As the snap goes, we have a flag, and it stops the play. Ball start on the offense. will set the Hornets back five more yards. Line of scrimmage becomes the Delaware State 21-yard line. Romo Martinez stands inside of his 10 to take the snap. A better snap this time, and he got away a good one. This one is going to angle toward the sideline and go out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it at the Aggies' 37-yard line. So another good punt by Fidel Romo Martinez. Martinez flips the field for Dell State, and again uh, puts that defense in a pretty good position uh, facing this Aggie offense. The Aggies look like on their first series that they were targeting 
Kiwan Selby. Let's see if they do the same thing in this one. And we have another timeout on the field. This is HSRN, the voice of HBCU Sports, and you're watching MEAC Football on ESPN3. on a Longhorn Steakhouse Cuts. 12-ounce New York Strip, center cut flows filet. For a limited time, 14-ounce Delmonico. The feeling, the flavor, the place. Longhorn Steakhouse, you can't fake steak. No room for error. Two down, pace is one. Nice catch, my man. That's gonna be on sports scene. First and 10 Aggies from their 37 yard line, their second possession of the game. And their quarterback, Lamar Reynard, drops back. He wants to throw downfield, and it is incomplete. His intended receiver, Zachary Leslie, the wide receiver, and it was well over his head. No chance for Leslie, the redshirt sophomore, to get to it. Showed he had a strong arm on that, that particular pass, so I expect to see them continuously challenge Dell State downfield. Once again, and we have a penalty marker on the field on the play. And we'll see what this one is. This will be against North Carolina A&T. It sets them back 10 yards. It remains first down, but it'll be first and 10 for the Aggies. Running play, right side, and a good hit. My golly, that's a solid shot on the running back, Jamain Martin. He came around that right side, and suddenly there was a wall there. Martin is doing a, a tremendous job of introducing himself uh, to Cartwright on that play. That's a tremendous run support hit right there. And that's the type of hit that inspires your teammates uh, to want to join in and do the exact same thing. 10 yard gain on the play brings up second down and 10 for the Aggies. Reynard from the gun, drops back, wants to throw, looks downfield, nobody available. Now throws a little dump pass and a stop at the 35 yard line, right on top of it. Completion to Markel Cartwright, the running back, but right there to make the stop for Delaware State. Was that Justin Costell? Yep, Johnny on the spot. Great open field tackle. That's a tough guy to bring down in space, but Costell does a pretty good job, Gary, of limiting yards after reception. A loss on the play of two yards. Third down now and 12 for the Aggies. That was a big play. Renard. From the gun, as Malik Washington in motion to the far side. Pressure coming, has to throw it, going deep. Coverage there, the receiver up over the coverage, but unable to hold on. Ron Hunt, the intended receiver, but the coverage right there to break it up. Kiron Selby doing a good job running step for step and waiting at the very last second to put that arm in there and break that pass up. That's a great defensive stance by Delaware State. Not only did they hold North Carolina A&T, but uh, they made them lose yardage on the play. Pressure coming on the punter. He got it away. A high punt. Bryson Aline from the 17-yard line. Dodges a couple of tacklers and then comes forward. And we have a penalty marker come in. We may have a face mask. It looked like somebody going by Aline got a hold of that face gear. Got to be a different type of a person to return kicks and punts. And Bryson Aline is that different type of a person. I mean, it looked like I, he might have wanted to signal for a fair catch, but he decided, look, he's got to make something happen for his team. And, you know, that was a pretty good six-yard punt return, if you ask me. Especially when you're running. For it. Actually, two men there converging on him. And he just kind of juked a little bit to the one side and the other and ran between the tacklers. 
Well, this penalty is on the return team on Delaware State, and it will be half the distance to the goal, unable to hear exactly what the penalty was, but it sets the Hornets back half the distance to the goal line, and we'll put the ball at the 13-yard line of Delaware State. And we'll take a timeout here. This is HSRN, the voice of HBCU Sports. And you're watching MEAC Football on ESPN3. Feast on one of Longhorn's Steakhouse Cuts. 12-ounce New York Strip, center cut flows filet. For a limited time, 14-ounce Delmonico. The feeling. The flavor, the place. Warhorn Steakhouse. You can't fake steak. No room for error. Two down, base is one. Nice catch, my man. That's gonna be on sports center. Official sponsors of HSRN are American Spirit Federal Credit Union, Ebon Environmental Services, Fred Drake Automotive, and Magic City Tickets. Hornets third possession of the game starting from their own 12-yard line here. Quarterback Keenan Black throws right side complete. Out close to the first down around the 22-yard line, diving out of bounds after making the catch for Delaware State. Number 12, Teron Selby, the senior wide receiver and twin brother of Kiwan Selby who plays on the other side of the ball. And that's just good timing between those two. We talked about Black developing more chemistry and timing with his receivers. That was a nice opening pass for this series. That's his 10th catch on the season for 36 yards. Now they'll go back to the ground as they give it to Bryson Aline, who managed to get forward for maybe about a yard and picks up the, whore, the first down for Delaware State. That was a good run by Bryant on that play, Gary, recognizing where the first down was. It is positive um, momentum, pretty much got that first down before that defensive line pushed him back. Back out to the 24-yard line and some breathing room for the Hornets. Aline through the middle, upfield, across the 40, to the 50-yard line. Cuts it to the outside and finally taken down around the North Carolina A&T 40-yard line. And that's Mike Waters who was the running back on that play. Waters had a good hold through the middle and busted it to the outside. No coverage on defense in the middle. Just looked like... It was one of those plays that was called at the right time. It seemed like the Aggies defensively vacated the area, and Waters does what Waters does. Took it to the Aggies' 41-yard line. Now a quick out on the left side, complete to Teron Selby. And Selby gets up to the 35-yard line. Pickup of six for the Hornets, second down. It's a name that I expected to hear more this season, but I haven't heard it uh, at the beginning of part of the season. But if they want to win, they got to get Selby involved in the offense. That run certainly opened things up a little bit for the Hornets. The pitch out, right side. Aline turns the corner upfield, across the 25, still on his feet, and knocked out of bounds around the 30-yard line. 20-yard line, it will be another Hornets first down. Just a spread, read option. Good read by Keen Black on that play, Gary. Just recognized that Bryson Aline had the lane on the outside. He gave him a good pitch, and Eileen turns on the Jets and picks up huge yards on the play. Hornets move into the red zone here. Let's see what they're able to do. They'll hand it off on first down, and the give is to Bryant Dallas. Dallas out behind right tackle, and he works his way down to the nine-yard line. Running behind. Leaky Sue, Caden Crawford, again, Delaware State offensive line showing that they can run block on this series. Mike Waters in the backfield now with Keenan Black. Black from the shotgun. Hands it off. Waters out between tackle and guard on that right side as things are happening for the Hornets on that right side of the offensive line. Waters gets up close to the 10-yard line. It's going to be uh, just shy of the 10-yard line. Third down, less than a yard to go. Mike Ward is a specimen. You know, I've had a chance to see him outside of his uniform. He's a short guy, but physically, he, he reminds me of a fire plug. And his leg strength, you can always tell his leg strength because when he's underneath the pile, 
You can see the pile moving, but you can't see him. They'll give it to Waters again as he bangs down inside the 10-yard line, but a penalty marker on the snap of the ball. False start on the Hornets. That will cost them five yards and bring up a third down and six. Mike Waters, the team's top rusher coming into the game, had 77 carries coming into the night for 288 net yards. He also averaging 3.7 yards per carry. Unofficially, that's the fifth penalty on the Hornets. Uh, we're still in the first quarter. The coach Milstead cannot be happy about the miscues as far as penalties are concerned early in the game. Just starting to uh, learn to read his body language from behind. Can't tell exactly what he's thinking, but it can't be good thoughts. There's the snap. But hold on. Markers go again on the snap of the ball. And play stops. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense Another the false start against the Hornets. Five yard penalty. Cost them Still another five yards. And rather than a third and one from the 11 yard line, now they have a third and 11 from the 21 yard line. Looked like Sellers may have snapped that ball uh, a little bit too early on that play. Hornets sending two receivers out wide on the left side. One on the right side is Keenan Black. Barks the signals. Long count. Drops back. Pressure coming from the left side. He steps on the right side and is brought down. I mean, some people might have been looking for a horse collar tackle on that, but uh, it looked like it was good. He got him around the shoulders. Right. You know, the officials were right there, so if it was a horse collar, they would have uh, thrown the flag. But again, credit. A and T by for flushing Black out of the pocket. The offensive line again still struggling to provide him that pass protection that he needs to see downfield and go through his progressions and you know just playing back with penalties really killed Dell State on this drive. Jose Ro Romo Martinez, a 38-yard field goal attempt, his fourth of the season, and he's 50% on the season as he hits his second field goal, and the Hornets get the first lead on a 38-yard field guy goal by Jose Romo Martinez out of the hold of his brother Fidel Romo Martinez. And we'll take a timeout on the field. This is the voice of HBCU Sports, HSRN, and you're watching MEAC Football on ESPN3. That's going to be on Sports Center. And finally knocked out of bounds at the 10 or, yeah, the nine yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Aggies. Just a five yard stop by Malik Wilson. Uh, catches that ball and eludes Kiwan Selby on the tackle. Picks up huge yardage. Puts him in a first and goal situation. Lamar Renard wants to get his team into the end zone. Fakes the handoff on first down and a pass into the end zone incomplete. Good coverage for Delaware State down there on the play by uh, Kiwan uh, Selby, the defensive back. Selby step for step battling with Zachary Leslie on that play. Uh, Renard threw that up there, just hoping that his wide receiver would out muscle Selby, but Selby doing a good job of breaking that up. Preseason all MEAC first team selection was Kiwan Selby, and he showed why on that play on his coverage. Second down and goal for the Aggies. Renard, hands off, and hit in the backfield. Good defensive play for Delaware State. A stop on Jamain Martin. Devin Smith is bringing some heat off of the left side. That's cornerback, corner blitz. And Tackles it for a loss. That's a great individual effort on that play. 
big third down and a loss of yardage on the play. Third and goal from the 13 for North Carolina A&T. Big bodies up in front there. Three receivers split out wide on the right side, and one on the left side, lone back in the backfield with quarterback Romanard. He drops straight back, wants to throw. A little bit of pressure from the left side. Rolls right, throws, end zone. In. They're going to call it a touchdown. A delayed signal, but finally ruled a touchdown. We were kind of screened from that corner of the end zone. A, uh, a sign right in front of us, unable to see it. But the officials were right there, and they're calling it a touchdown. Lamar Reynard doing a pretty good job, Gary, just buying some extra time. He got flushed out of the pocket, but he never took his eyes off what was happening downfield and delivered a, a great strike, which appears to be a touchdown. <laughs> So now the extra point attempt. Noel's kick is up, and it is good. And the Aggies very quickly get into the lead, going up 7-3 to three here with just a few seconds left in the first quarter. We'll take a timeout. This is HSRN, the voice of HBCU Sports, and you're watching MEAC football on ESPN3. For Benavides Jr., Saturday at 10.30 on ESPN. It's a tackle at the 20-yard line, blows through, and is finally pulled down at the 35-yard line. And they're saying that was Teron Selby on the return. And not only did, uh, did he show his speed on that, he also showed that he can deliver a hit as well. Finished it off like you're supposed to finish off, finish off any type of running. Let's try to deliver a, a blow to the defender. But again, seems like Selby's motivated today. And they need to work with this guy. They need to get him the ball in space as much as possible. He's very hard to bring down. He's a fast, shifty kind of a runner. And they need, we just need to hear his name more. Aggies went 65 yards in five plays. That's an average of 13 yards a play in a minute and 44. Hornets run right side. A lean on the carry. Pickup of a three to the 38 yard line. It'll be second down. Again, running behind uh, Leaky Sue and Caden Crawford. Those guys are a nice tandem on the right side of the offensive line. It allowed Del State to pick up some good yardage on that side of the field. About a three second difference between the play clock and the game clock, so this will be the last play of the first quarter. They'll hand it off and run left side. Aline, as a penalty marker goes down back at the line of scrimmage, Aline gets enough across the 45 yard line for the first down, but we'll wait and see what this penalty is. Personal foul, Personal foul. shot block. Number 66 and 78, 15-yard penalty from the, the previous spot. Yardage. Repeat second down. It'll still be second down, and we'll have just uh, a couple of ticks of the clock left here in the first quarter as they'll move back to the Delaware State 22-yard line. They're going to hit Matthew Dirks with that chop block, and that's the left side of the offensive line. And, you know, again, if you're Dell State, you, know, you can't dig your own grave with these miscues, these Mistakes. That's the end of the first quarter. All right, that finishes off the first quarter before they can even get the snap away. The end of the first quarter here from Delaware State University. We'll take this time out. This is HSRN, the voice of HBCU Sports, and you're watching MEAC football on ESPN3. Our team, choose kindness, shred hate. MLB, ESPN, and X Games are teaming up to shred hate. Learn more at shredhate.org. Aggies lead by four here as we start the second quarter for Dover, Delaware, Jerry Lang, and Mike Walker. And for the Hornets, Keenan Black throwing deep and over the head of his intended receiver, aired that one out and was trying to get it to Teron Selby down the left sideline. Selby showing the Jets, but again, Keenan Black put that ball where only uh, Selby was going to catch it. You know, could have been on the inside shoulder. He put it on the outside shoulder and hoped he could have worked 
to the sideline to pick it up, but he couldn't get to the ball. The defender had him tight along the sideline. He really didn't have much room over there. Now on second down and 10, lone, the two backs in the backfield, they'll give it to the first one, and that is Mike Waters, and Waters spins his way out across the 25 to the 26 yard line. Four yards on the play for Mike Waters. It'll bring up third and six, fourth down rather. And, uh, 20 with that penalty that they had last year. Yeah. Officials oh, timeout. Shaking up the play, starting to come off the field under his own power. And as the trainers went out, uh, he went down to the turf. And that's Mike Ward. Is, I'm hoping that it's just a cramp of some sort because he seems to be holding um, his, his hamstring. And he will be assisted off the field. Waters, one of the mainstays of that offense for Delaware State. He is the team's top rusher coming into the game. They'll get him over to the trainer's table and work on him a bit. Now on fourth down, it's time for a punt for Delaware State. This one, a good kick. Takes the return man back to his own 25 yard line. It's Kashan Baker. Baker up across the 40, 50 yard line to midfield, across midfield, and slips as he gets across the 40 yard line. Falls down at the Delaware State 37 yard line. Romo Martinez with one of those booming punts, but he might have actually outkicked the coverage. Um, the punt team just didn't seem to have enough guys down there, Gary, to really play solid defense. And, you know, that just gave AT everything they needed, just a found a little seam on the right side of the field and individually. We've, we've seen Fidel Romo Martinez do that a couple of times this year. Gets away a good yardage punt, but it's more of a line drive. He has to get that hang time there to allow the coverage team to get downfield. The rule of four, 4.4 4 seconds in the hang time with 44 yards down the field. Lamar Renard fakes the handoff on first down, throws right side incomplete through behind his intended receiver. And he was looking on that play for Richie Kittles. Second down and 10 for the Aggies. Renard, redshirt senior, hands off on second down. Through the middle, breaking tackles, and inside the Hornets 25-yard line on the carry, Markel Cartwright. He is a horse. That's just a great job, you know, picking up yards after initial contact. Look like he's supposed to be stopped for maybe a four or five yard game, but just his determination and good balance north and south running allowed him to pick up enough yards for a first down. Averaging coming in to tonight, 5.2 yards per carry. He's the team's leading rusher, and we just saw why. There's a pass intended for Ron Hunt over Hunt's head, and he took a shot as it, uh, he was unable to catch the ball. Devin Smith doing a good job of just playing that cover D on him and you know, reminding him that every time you put your hands on the ball, you're going to feel me. Second down and 10 from the Delaware State 24-yard line. Mar Reynard, the quarterback for the Aggies. With a long count. Ten seconds on the play clock. Hands off on second down. This time again to Markel Cartwright. Cartwright got up to the 20-yard line and then gang tackled by four Delaware State Red jerseys who pushed him back because Cartwright was still trying for yardage. That was good defensive play by the defensive line for Dell State. Christian Johnson, Isaiah Williams, and Moses Dupree doing a good job of forcing Cartwright uh, to redirect uh, where he was intending to run. And that allowed that, those defensive backs and those linebacks to come up and for run support. Third down now with six yards to go for North Carolina A&T. Renard with a lone back in the backfield. Four, three receivers split out wide on the right. He pulls it down. He'll run with it, and he will get a first down as he goes out of bounds at the Delaware State 12 yard line. Bernard gingerly just running down the field and 
putting the, the moves on the players and you just see all these Dell State defensive backs diving at his feet and he picks up not only the first down but he steps out of bounds and puts them in a position where it's not even first and goal. They have another opportunity to get a first down. So it's going to be an interesting drive for the Aggies. They've set the line of scrimmage at the 11-yard line, first and 10 there for Renard. Takes the run on the option, passive, pitches it left side, and the ball still loose. Hornets, did it go out of bounds? What are they going to rule here? One of the Hornets tried to grab at it, couldn't hold on to it, and I think he was actually on the sideline when he made contact with the ball, which would have the ball be dead there. And it'll be really North on the field. His back was passed. Possession. It went forward and out of bounds. Looked like Devin Smith might have had a shot at that play. But he was out of bounds when he made contact with the ball. So close to the big turnover for Delaware State. Devin Smith making the dive, trying to get it. Bit of luck there for the Aggies with second down and 10. Fake handoff, quarterback, keeper, Renard, touchdown. Well, they sent Jermaine Martin into the middle of the line and the defense bid on that. And the quarterback took it around the left side, untouched. Good ball fake by Renard on that play. Kept the interior where he wanted to keep them, allowed himself to get a clean look at the flank and he just tippy-toed into the end zone. North Carolina a and using that unusual setup here as they have most of the linemen to the left side and then they come back over and get over the ball in their normal position. I don't know if that is supposed to help the kicker to uh, focus on the goal post without people in front of him, but that extra point kick is blocked. That is that could be a big play for Delaware State to block that conversion attempt. Media timeout. A good block for Delaware State. We'll take this timeout. This is HSRN, the voice of ESPN. 29 total yards here in the first half, two touchdowns. Davis Rogers, the kicker. And Rogers approaches. This ball will be taken at the Hornets eight yard line. And hit, spinning away, breaking tackles, and then finally driven back on the return for Delaware State. It looked like Kiwan Selby. It's going to be Kiwan Holly. Okay. A little hesitation, I think, might have cost him some big yards on that return. Um, he's usually tasked to block uh, for Bryson Eileen, but last week, given an opportunity to return some kicks, he ended up uh, taking one back to the house. So he's a dangerous threat as a receiver and as a returner. His 12th kickoff return of the season, averaging tonight coming in 27.6 yards per return. That didn't help his average, and that won't help the rushing average for Delaware State on that play. As on the handoff, they lose a yard or two. They'll set it back to the 19-yard line, and it will be second and 11. Bryce and Irene finding nothing behind R.J. Moley and Matthew Dokes on the left side of the line. Aileen can make things happen in the open, but when he's in the middle there, he needs that help. On that play, it's the quarterback keeping and a loose ball. It will be Aggie's ball at the Hornets' 18-yard line. Ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by North Carolina A&T. First out. Against Norfolk where Black attempts to do maybe something a little bit extra to make something happen for the team. Ends up Previous the play is under the review. So again, a critical turnover for Delaware State on a possession where they really needed to drive down the field, take some time off the clock, okay. and put some points on the board. The DSU postgame show on 
HSRN is brought to you by American Spirit Federal Credit Union in Newark, Middletown, and Dover. And uh, there's a short time out on the field. Enough opportunity for us to remind you that uh, we'll be on the road again next week, Mike Walker. Next week, over to the nation's capital as the Hornets play at Howard University. Another MEAC game into that part of the season. A chance for these guys to go up against Cam Newton's brother. He's doing a fine job there at Howard. Kalen Newton. Not as big as his brother, but just as electrifying and exciting. Yeah, they're very happy to have him at Howard. He's reinvigorated really a lot of attention in, in the football program over there. So you know, Delaware State wants to take care of business here first and, you know, maybe bring a win streak of one down the road to Howard University. First, they have to get into this game. And that turnover might have been a, a, a hurtful turnover for the Hornets as the offense has been showing some things, but a bad break there. As Keenan Black tried to take it around the left side and just lost the handle on the hit. And I don't think Coach Milsada has any intention of going to the bullpen and pulling Black. You know, he's going to allow him to just essentially play his game and hopes that he can compensate with this mistake by making something big happen on you know, some of these subsequent possessions from Delaware State. And I think it's a good idea. No one's going to kick themselves harder uh, on that last possession than Black is. And he's just got to have a short memory because they need him. They need his ability to throw the ball, and they need his ability to run the ball. Because without that dual threat, it just makes it real difficult for this offense to have any chance of being successful. Don't forget you can follow HSRN on Twitter, game day, and all through the week at HS Radio. Follow us on Twitter. The best in HBCU sports. And we'll come back here in just a moment. Total yards for North Carolina A&T, 129. The Hornets with 100 total yards on the game. Third downs, the Hornets have yet to convert a third down out of three tries. And, you know, the area where the Hornets are winning or leading statistically in this game are ones that they don't want to lead in. That's turnovers uh, and penalties. And, again, they're killing themselves with these miscues. They're not allowing drives uh, to sustain. They're not moving the ball down the field like they're capable of doing. They've shown they can run the ball against this a t defense. They've shown they can actually throw the ball against this a t defense. But the one thing that they haven't shown is that they can sustain a drive without a turnover or a penalty. 86 rushing yards for Delaware State. They do lead in that category, but where they trail is in yards passing. North Carolina a t with 60 passing yards. Delaware State was just 14, and that's been a weak point of all the previous games as well, passing yardage. Right. Again, you know, if you can't sustain the drive, you're not going to be able to build any stats. The quarterback's not going to develop any timing with his receivers. You point to anything that's the reason why Dell State is currently trailing, it's going to be miscues, turnovers, and penalties. Mike Walker, the reason for the delay here, I believe we have an official's review. I thought it was the vote for the uh, next Supreme Court justice as much time as they're taking right now. Referee Robert Frazier has been looking at a, an electronic device down there, and he's now going to tell us what's been going After on. After further review, the ruling on the field was the player was down prior to losing ball. The and ball we placed in the 19 yard line. Whether or not the line to gain is a 30. It will be third down and 11 from the 19. And I believe the ruling is that the ball will be Delaware State's. That Black was down before the ball came loose. So there's a break for the Hornets. No turnover. It's third and 11. 
Instead, be third down and 11 yards to go for Delaware State. That long timeout was for an official's review. So back on offense go the Hornets. And the Hornets have to call a timeout as they rush time back out. to the field. Delaware they State, only had 10 men that on is the their field. first team timeout of the half. This will also be a media so timeout. To, uh, catch up and restructure there. Had to call that timeout. They were in danger of being called. Use it, it chose me. the 25 yard line going to be short of the first down as black had to scramble to go and carry the ball got close to the first down but he's going to be just a couple of yards short good tackle by antoine wilder linebacker on that play he showed good foot speed black is very fast and he had the ability to basically run step for step for him and allow him not to pick up that first down Fidel Romo Martinez to punt again. He'll give you a good punt for yardage. He needs to get some hang time into these things and let his coverage team get down there. This one hangs a little bit more and the coverage team gets down there taken at the 24 yard line, eluding a couple of tacklers and finally brought down at the 34 yard line. Sean Baker on the return for North Carolina a and G, and they are set up with fine field position for this possession. That was pretty good coverage by the punt team for Dell State. Might have picked up maybe six or seven yards on that return. So that's exactly kind of what you want to do. They flipped the field. Uh, so again, it's going to be a very important drive for the defense. They love a three and out, but they can't give up any points on this possession. Aggies lead 13-3 10-15 left in the first half Lamar Renard the quarterback for North Carolina A&T hands it off on first down around the right side that's Jermaine Martin and Martin gets out to around the 45 yard line good for 11 yards and a first down for the Aggies. Forced out by Cavalcanti, but that's after he picks up the first down again. That's just good uh, sweep technique by a &T. 12 yards on the play to the 46 yard line. Aggies in the white uniforms. A little bit of direction given in the backfield there by quarterback Lamar Reynard to his running back, Jermaine Martin. Reynard drops back. Looks downfield. He wants to go deep. He does. Has a man wide open at the 20-yard line and in for the touchdown. It's Malik Wilson. And that one goes 54 yards for the score. Shahad Nibau on the cover. It just seems like there was a blown coverage on that play. Uh, I think Nibau got somewhat lost, maybe looking in the backfield, got set, fooled by the play action. And that's just a wide open situation. A &T. Quarterback Renard saw his man get open and knew he had six. All he had to do was get it to the right spot. Just a little rainbow in there, and it was an easy pitch and catch for a &T. Noel Ruiz had his last extra point attempt blocked. This one is good. This will be a media timeout. Media timeout. And so it is now a 20 to three game with North Carolina a &T in the lead. Drive. The all new 2019 Infiniti QX50. There's nothing traditional about it. Infiniti, empower the drive. Big things happen. They have to start this possession with good field position so they're going to need a strong return out of any of those guys be it Bryce and Eileen Selby or Kawan Kali one of those guys going to have to make something happen Kawan Kali 
to Ron Selby standing at about the nine yard line on each side. And the deep man for Delaware State is Bryson Ali. It will be Collie at the four. Collie brings it up to the middle. Gets away from one tackler and then he is gang tackled and driven back as he gets to the 15 yard line. You just couldn't find any creases or any seams. Ain't he doing a good job of staying in their lanes and getting off the blocks, not allowing Kawana Collie to find you know any running lanes uh, to return that ball. So Delaware State starting from inside their own 20 yard line, they'll call the line of scrimmage the 16. And the Hornets will have to try to get something going here. Plenty of time left in the first half for Delaware State to try to put something up on the board. They need a touchdown on one of these possessions. They need a penalty and turnover free drive, and it has to occur right now. And they'll stay on the ground on the left side. It is Aline out over left tackle. Good for two yards out to the 18-yard line. But they'll now have second down and long, second and eight. No huddle offense again. Delaware State just running play after play. We had an indication that they might go with some huddles tonight, but so far it's been no huddle. That team coming to the line of scrimmage. And there we have a marker, and this could be another false start penalty and that was false start fourth offense number 70 five yard penalty still second down fourth or fifth of the evening for delaware state on false starts and they got the number wrong so that's going to be leaky sue that they catch for that false start they attributed to number 70 but that's a defensive play that's a leaky sue right guard he probably did not run out and correct them either he just as happy not to have his number announced. So it's third down and long after the penalty. And here is Aline to the right side, to the 40-yard line, to the 50-yard line, and knocked out of bounds as he crosses midfield. And it was the keeper by Keenan Black and not the running back, Bryson Aline. Keenan Black picking up big yardage for the Hornets. He shows you why he's the, not only one of the more explosive runners on the team, but he's the third leading rusher on this team. Give Black an opportunity uh, to run the ball in space, he usually makes okay. good things happen. Over the 100 yard rushing mark for the season with that carry and sets his team up with good field position here. Now, uh, the give is to Aline. He has to fight his way through tacklers up to the 45 yard line. Gain of three on that play by Aline to make it second and seven. Black from the shotgun. Little mix up in the backfield. Now he rolls left side throws, and I think he was just getting rid of that one. He was looking to hand that there ball There is no foul off, for Tishon Browning. The quarterback is out of the box. There was a player in the area. Side, saw Teron Selby out there. Uh, wasn't really trying to get it to Selby, though, but he had a receiver out in the area, and he could get rid of the ball. It looked like Bryson Arlene and Brian Dallas, both of them in the pro set formation, kind of bumped into each other. Uh, looked like they were trying to establish that option run play, but uh, one of those guys ran in the wrong direction. Shame it was. Selby was open out there, too. It'll be the quarterback, Black, on the keeper. He's hit and the ball comes loose. And again, it will go out of bounds. Bryson Ali may have saved it for Delaware State, or it may have gone out of bounds. At any rate, it's going to bring up fourth down and 10 for the Hornets. Keenan Black trying to make too much happen on that play, Gary. When you run that option as a quarterback, sometimes the only thing that's available is the yard that you can pick up. He should have been happier uh, just picking up two yards that he got on that play as opposed to that dangerous pick that almost cost uh, the team another turnover. And he had that ball held out loose from his body when he got hit. And you know what happens then. It'll, it'll fly away. Here's the kick by Romo Martinez. Will be fair caught at the eight-yard line. Good decision by Kashawn Baker there for the fair catch. No, not fair. 
So now the Hornets defense will try to uh, hold here and we have a timeout on the field. This is HSRN, the voice of HBCU Sports, and you're watching MEAC football on ESPN3. Come back. Come back. It's second and eight. Ball on the eleven yard line. Carry by Markel Cartwright was good for two yards up to the 10 yard line. And now the quarterback, Reynard, rolls right side, throws complete. It'll be under the yardage needed for the first down as he gets out to close to the 18 yard line. Keenan Selby again on the tackle. They've been attacking his side of the field all game. So he's going to have. A whole lot of tackles, a whole lot of stats, but it also gives him an opportunity to make a big play. And this defense is going to have to make a big play to spark the offense. Malik Wilson was the receiver on that last play. Two receivers split out each side, and they're more or less in an eye formation, one behind the other in both sides. They go with a running play to try to catch the defense, and the Hornets' defense was there to make the stop on the play. Great job by defensive end Christian Johnson on that play, Gary. Eluding the offensive tackle, getting off that block and wrapping up. Running back up for a short game on that play. Renard thought he would uh, get something uh, with and, and catch those uh, defensive linemen coming in on a pass rush. And instead, they read the run and made the stop. Fourth down and two, and the Aggies will punt. And the Hornets set up for the return. Good line drive punt, and a good opportunity for the Hornets to get a good return across the 50 to the Aggies, 46 yard line on the return. Good kick return by Bryson Aline, but we have a penalty marker, and I think we're going to get an illegal block on Delaware State. And again, another momentum killer because that's not only a great return. Right? During the return, illegal it's block in the back. That, return that team number 41. 10-yard penalty from the spot the of the foul. Del State retains possession. Down First down. Based on field position. So it's a 10-yard penalty, and that you're still going to have first and 10. But you have the ball back at your own 33-yard line instead of up at the midfield area. So it's a much more serious penalty than that. It just negates a great effort by Bryson Ali. And, you know, that's a killer. Nothing Coach Milstead could do. You know, no one scripts uh, penalties. That's something that, you know, is more mental than anything else. Black fakes the handoff. Drops back, throwing deep and complete, coming back for the ball and making the catch and working his way close to the 30-yard line. Trey Gross. That ball was underthrown. Gross had to work back through the defenders to get to it. I thought, yeah, maybe somebody might have put a hand on that ball, but I think Keenan Black just put a little bit too much air under it. But nonetheless, Trey Gross picked it up early, made the reception, and still picked up some yards after the catch. First and 10, Delaware State at the 31-yard line of the Aggies. They roll left side, and the pitch out goes to Bryant Dallas. Dallas upended coming around the left side, gets a yard to the 30-yard line. Spread option on that play, Black with a good read, drew the defense to him, uh, got Dallas there out in space. And, and Dallas, I know, wish he could have that play back because there was definitely more yardage had he bounced that to the outside. 
Second down and nine. Black hands it off to Aline. He finds a little bit of a hole. No, he didn't get handed off. He kept it and was taken down in the backfield. It faked me. It did not fake the North Carolina A&T defense as the Hornets lost yardage on the play. Good tackle by Sam Blue, the defensive end by uh, A&T. He wasn't fooled by the hand fakes. And his assignment was black, and he made the tackle for a short loss. Third and 11. Aline takes the snap. Rolls right side now, finds a way to clear. Throws toward the end zone. Double coverage down there. And that's a lot of respect shown by, uh, to the intended receiver, Trey Gross. He's had double coverage on two in a row. Made the first catch, but that one batted away by the defense. The leading receiver on the team, so obviously a and is always going to pay attention to him. And it looked like he put a double move and was trying to get behind the defenders, but I think Black might have thought uh, he was going to just do an out or a stop route. He put the ball up, and for Dell State, they should be happy it wasn't an interception. Jose Romo Martinez to try a 49-yard field goal. The kick is up, and it is good. A 49-yard field goal for Jose Romo Martinez, his second field goal of the night. He had enough leg on that guy to maybe kick a 55-yard or so. He's got the distance, he's got the accuracy on that kick, and right now it's his leg that's keeping the Hornets in the game. Martinez came into this game one for three on field goal attempts. He's now three of five on the season. And that was a pretty good kick. Dell State's had a couple of big plays, and we talked about that, that was key. Uh, winning the battle mentally, emotionally, and big plays. They've had some big plays, but none of them have resulted uh, in touchdowns. And that's what Dell State is missing on offense, that situation where somebody catches the ball for maybe five yards and turns it into a home run. Or a guy just takes the ball off the right or the left side of the line, breaks the tackle, and ends up in the end zone. They need one of those plays in this game to shift the momentum back to their favor. For all your cleaning needs, trust Ebon Environmental Services. You can reach them at 973-818-5449. So, Martinez will now kick off for Delaware State. And he is definitely uh, encouraged by the field goal. He kicked that one to the end zone. And it will be downed in the end zone by North Carolina A&T. No return. Oh, we placed the 25-yard line. On that kickoff. And, you know, those are the type of things that I think Dell State wants at this point. They don't want to give uh, any opportunities for any home runs uh, on a kickoff return for A&T. So you got Romo Martinez. He's feeling it right now. Have him drive that ball into the end zone every kickoff. Much happier to have the ball start off at the 25-yard line than the risk of the big return. Right. So the Aggies with uh, just over three minutes left in the first half to try to get some more points on the board as they lead Delaware State 20 to six. And handoff around the right side very quickly is Markel Cartwright. And Cartwright upended as he turns the corner, knocked out of bounds, but not until he gets enough yardage for the first down. Well, he runs hard, he's short in squat, but he has pretty deceptive speed. You know, when he hits these corners, it looks like guys should be able to bring him down, but he's moving faster than everybody around him. First and 10 for the Aggies from their 35-yard line. They stay on the ground here, and again, it's Cartwright. This time, tries to go left side. Now that behind that left guard gets only a yard to the 36. Good open field tackle by Brian Cavaconte. You know, he's uh, one of those active linebackers for Dell State. Another one of those short-handed tackles that prevents a big game on that play. Forcing the Aggies into a second and long situation. Quarterback tried to draw play, and Renard caught in the backfield. They'll call that a sack, and it was Cavacante on the sack. Third down and 10, a loss of a yard on the play. It's 
Huge third down situation for Dell State. The defense right now is playing with some momentum, some zest, some emotion. Uh, you can see everybody on the sideline is, is cheering the morns. Right now, the whole team is dialed into this game. That's encouraging. As they set the line of scrimmage, it's third and 11. And Renard hit way in the backfield at his 23 yard line. The Hornets blitzed. Hadn't seen a blitz tonight, but they did it on that play, and it was perfectly timed. Delaware State, that is their second team timeout time out for the half. Bowman, the freshman sensation out of Milford doing a good job of getting what I believe statistically guy may be the first sack of the season for Delaware State University. There have been a couple previously, but they have been far and few between. And for Delaware State, that came at exactly the right time. It forces the Aggies into a fourth and 23. And the Hornets could come out with good field position here with less than a minute and a half remaining in the first half. They're probably gonna send pressure on this one. Either way, I expect a pretty decent return out of Bryce and Eileen. Uh, if they can get him this ball. <laughs> Here's the punt for the Aggies. Hornets came close to touching that one. It'll be taken at the 37 yard line for Delaware State by Aline. And he is upended immediately. Check that on the punt return. That was Kiwan Selby. Selby taken down at the 40-yard line. So Delaware State, not much more than a minute to try to travel 60 yards. Need a big play. This has not been a big play offense. A&T is going to defensively try to keep everything in front of them. They don't want Del State to hit the home run. That's going to give Del State an opportunity to catch those shallow crosses, pick up you know, a whole lot of hidden yards, uh, hopefully get out of bounds, and work the clock. Keenan Black rolled to his left side, couldn't find anything there, came to his right side, pump fake, and then ran with the ball up to the 43-yard line, three-yard gain on the carry. Sure tackle by Antoine Wilder on that play because it's very difficult to bring down uh, Keenan Black in space. Hornets quickly back to the line of scrimmage, and they throw. It is complete at the 49-yard line. Trey Gross, they line him up in the slot position, just basic pitch and catch. He turns around, the ball's already been delivered. He catches it and falls about a yard short of the first down. Third down and one. And they'll give it to Mike Waters. Waters blows through and picks up the first down up to the Aggies 47 yard line. I didn't see him on the sidelines, but you know, he went out a little earlier holding the back part of his leg. So clearly that might've just been a cramp in the hamstring. He's worked it out. Looked good there. Keenan Black takes the shotgun snap, throws left side incomplete. His intended receiver over there, Brett Pilkerton, appeared to have fallen down on the play. And that was not Pilkerton, it was Teron Selby. It looked like Black wasn't even set on that play, Gary. His feet were kind of uh, still moving. drifting and yeah. moving. And, you know, he's got to get himself set. He's got to, you know, create that straight line pass to his receiver. The incompletion stopping the clock with 17 seconds left in the half. At the Aggies 47 yard line, second down, the sideline complete. And running back inside, there's a mistake by Kawana Kali. He was right at the sideline. All he had to do was step out of bounds to stop the clock. And instead he moved back inside. Hornets had to burn a timeout. Timeout, there. Delaware State. That is their third and final timeout. Had of the half. Their third this will be a 30 out. second time out of length. A timeout by stepping out of bounds. And really, uh, the difference by staying in bounds and running game with the ball. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 11 seconds. Two or three yards. 11 seconds on the game clock. What he's trying to do is pick up the first down, but when you go no huddle, these are the things Thank you cannot discuss with people. And I understand the clock is running, so you can't go no huddle. But these are, the, these are the things you risk. He's still a young guy, right? And he, I don't think he fully understood the situation. He made the catch. He was standing right by the sideline. He could have stepped out of bounds and put him in a third and short. 
uh, without having to burn that timeout. But trying to make something happen, he cut it back in and got tackled and forced Del State to use a timeout. Delaware State just over 200 yards of total offense here in the first half. We have an interview coming up at halftime with Eric Skeeters, the new Delaware State University men's basketball coach who was part of history during the NCAA tournament last year. That ball almost picked by Antoine Wilder, the linebacker. Fourth down for Delaware State, two yards to go. And just under eight seconds left in the half. You got to go for the end zone on this one, Mike Walker. Black, quick out, complete. Collie steps out of bounds, and maybe they were looking for field goal position there. And that's exactly what they did. Kawana Collie stepping out of bounds at the 33 yard line. Good play by Dell State. And they get an opportunity to put more points on the board. We've already seen Roma Martin make one uh, to shy of 50 yards. This one's going to be a huge one. This will be a 50, 50 yarder if he hits it. He made a 49 yarder before. This one has enough distance. No, oh, it hit the crossbar. Looked like it had just enough to get over and it hit the crossbar. That's the end of the first half. 50 yard field goal attempt. He needed to kick it 51 to make it. So everybody goes to the locker room at the half here, just missing that field goal. They go to the locker room at halftime with North Carolina A&T leading 20 to six. First half thoughts, Mike Walker, penalty, 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 penalty. Penalty, 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 miscues, and just, you know, the things that prevented Dell State from sustaining the drives. And, you know, we've seen some good running plays inside of the tackles. We've seen them complete some decent passes, but we haven't seen the consistency necessary. Well, going into week six of the season, you take a look at um, uh, how the MEAC stacks up. as uh, everybody is now in conference play. You know, basically, we're looking at the team to beat out here, and that's North Carolina a and um, Right now, Dell State is still in this game. With all the mistakes that they've made, they're literally still into this game. They're going to need some big plays on defense, and they're going to need their play.
You would not believe how long I've been rehearsing that. No annual fee on any card, only from Discover. And guess what? We're going to bring that back. We're going to bring back all those exciting nights for Delaware State because this arguably is the best home court uh, atmosphere in the conference. I mean, I, I'd like to say I, having coached here at the University of being in the building and the pep rally and things I see here with the body here, we're going to turn this place into a tough place to play. All right, and let me just uh, advise our viewers on ESPN3. We're talking here with Eric Skeeter, uh, the, the new head catch basketball coach at Delaware State University as he's getting ready for uh, his upcoming season. Looking at a team that last year went 4-28. and 28. Uh, there's been some glory years in basketball here. You, of yes, course, want to get yes. them back to that. You've had a chance to look at some film, but you didn't get to do much recruiting. No, it was late in the process. Uh, my, my thanks and, and my heart goes out to Dr. Mishu and Dr. Gines and the whole process because they wanted to make sure they did it right, and that's what they did, and they didn't rush. And so I'm, I'm blessed that they gave me a call and offered me an opportunity, regardless of the time. There's only 351 of these in the world. Mm -hmm. So when the call came, yes, we have to make some adjustments and make some things happen late. So we got some guys. We were some, able to bring some guys in that were available. I think we got a, a couple good ones that will show themselves in the league as time progresses. You know, but one thing about it is the kids are bought in. They bought in. They bought into the work. They bought into the change. They bought into the style of play, and we're definitely going to play fast. We're going to get up and down. And having the personnel to do it, we had to bring some walk-ons on and some walk-ons back. And some guys are actually, you know, making a contribution, paying their own way to school. And everybody now wants to be the, the part of the excitement of what's new, what, what Coach Milstein is doing with the football program. I mean, you got a, a Super Bowl championship head coach here. Yeah. And, and back where he also played. So it's a, it's a lot of fun with the new leadership. And, again, my hat goes off to Dr. Gines and Dr. Mishu because they are doing a great job with this. I call it the pearl in the oyster. A whole new attitude this year in, in Delaware State Athletics. It kind of it just kind of festered for a little bit of time there. And, and now there's that attempt to, to go back to some of the, the good stuff mm -hmm. uh, when, when football teams won conference exactly. championships, when Delaware State's basketball team, both mm -hmm. men and women, exactly. won conference championships. And it's not that long ago. Right. Uh, the players who are on your basketball team, who you retained from the last couple of years, you could see there, there was some talent there. They tried very hard, and there was a frustration with that losing. If they can turn that corner, in scheduling this year, looking at the November-December schedule, in, in previous seasons, we saw some of those tournaments where you were one and out, mm -hmm. um, those early season things. Mm -hmm. This year, the early part of the schedule, you could have a couple of wins under your belt before December comes around. Hey, I, listen, your lips to God's ears. I hope so. I'm looking at East Carolina, November 6th. That's the first game on the schedule. The guys have definitely bought into – they were right there all along the way. Every game we played – Last year, and I was coached against him, so I was at UNBC coming in here as an assistant coach. They were code, I have it on all the time. It's fantastic. We get to build toys for kids and change the world. It's a big deal. Here at the half, and right now I'm joined in the press box by Sports Information Director at Delaware State University, Dennis Jones, longtime friend and a colleague and a, and a good guy. Earlier tonight, somebody was showing me a YouTube video of a game you and I did here 30 years ago on local cable television. I must have been the youngest broadcaster in history, like a five-year-old kid broadcasting a game. I like. think the two of us probably <laughs> set a record at yeah. that point. Um, it, it just kind of blew my mind, and again, uh, reminded me of the evils of the internet. Oh my! Oh my goodness! Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm gonna I, have to watch. I wanted all that tape burned and, and, and it's just thrown <laughs> away somewhere. Yeah, this 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 field and this university was way different back then, and uh, it's come quite a long ways, even in the uh, area of athletics. I mean, a lot of things have changed over the years, but yeah, those were some fun days calling games here. Dennis, you've State. been here through championship seasons. You've been here through some miserable seasons. The outlook is much better this year. Yeah, it, it seems like there's a there's a buzz, no pun intended, here at Delaware State where we're the Hornets. But there, there's a lot of things happening in athletics, and of course it's football season. But you know we're we're a school that prides itself on on diversity, and uh, this school has uh, athletic offerings, everything from equestrian, which is uh, the horses, to 
to, to women's lacrosse and golf, and then of course your you, you know your traditional sports, track and field, football, men's and women's basketball, baseball. So that's something that at Delaware State prides itself in. I think that really makes it uh, somewhat unique in, in terms of uh, college and, and what you offer in, uh, in, in the way of sports. And you are you are so busy. You're covering all the sports here at Delaware State. I don't know how you tear yourself well, away sometimes on season overlaps. Oh, it, it, it's tough. Thursday night we had a great soccer match here, an evening game. Uh, last evening we had a, a volleyball match, a MEAC match against Howard University. We have football tonight and volleyball again tomorrow. I'll find a way to sleep and eat maybe somewhere between now and uh, when the volleyball match starts. But this is the time of year. You know, the school year is still relatively young, and, uh, you know, the kids are back. So it, it, it's, it's a great time here at Delaware State. And, and it's nice that you're able to come on with us here on ESPN3 for a few minutes because it may be the only time this week that your lovely bride, Dawn, has, has seen you. Yeah, she, <laughs> she, uh, my family has come out for years, my wife and kids when they were young. In fact, my oldest son is, is assisting us here in the press box a little bit. So it's been a, a way for us as a family. A lot of families come out here, look in the crowd tonight, you see a lot of families, and this is really the thing going on in Dover, Delaware, on a fall, uh, fall evening. I'm reminding you, Laura loves you, and you're doing a great job. Gary Lang and Mike Walker from Alumni Stadium in Dover, Delaware. The sports capital of Delaware on the east, well, the sports capital of the East Coast this weekend at least. Thousands of people in town for the NASCAR race right across the street. The Monster Mile, I mean, it's huge. Um, they won't give you the, the, the total for what it holds, but you could easily squeeze 90 grand up in there. And there's the left-footed kickoff for Delaware State, taken at the 13-yard line by the Aggies. Brought up the field, across, and breaking through tackles out close to the 40-yard line. A good return for North Carolina A&T by Amos Williams, one of their wide receivers. That's how you return a kickoff. You gotta, it's a gamble, you know. He found a little bit of a seam and quickly ran through it. You get a speedy wide receiver who can shoot those little bit of a gap and take advantage of it. You know, and you got to run as fast as the guys are running towards you. And I can tell you the difference between a touchdown and a concussion of returning that kickoff is usually about six inches. Well, we, Bryson Aline found that out out at St. Francis earlier this year on a kickoff return when he suffered a concussion and was lost for that game and the following game at Western Michigan. Their open date came at the right time to give him a chance to get back into action. Running play on first down. They try the right side, and there's nothing there. That Hornet defense coming up big in the backfield. A loss of yardage on the carry. Great tackle by linebacker Brian Cavacante, the heart and soul of this defense. You know, we're starting to hear his name more and more and more. And, you know, he may become the focus, but the good thing is, He's going to bring some of those other linebackers and some of those guys on the defensive side of the ball with him as his play accelerates. Miak player of the week, defensive player of the week for his play against St. Francis week two as he made that stop for a loss. He blitzes here on second down. Uh, the quarterback gets away from the blitz, throws complete downfield close to the 50-yard line, but having to roll out Ron Hunt on the reception, having to roll out the quarterback Lamar Reynard. Uh, was really under a lot of pressure as uh, Cavacante was the second man on the blitz and he found a hole to come through. They try to plug up that hole in the middle, but it will be a surge forward across midfield to the Delaware State 49-yard line on the carry by North Carolina A&T, and it will be a first down uh, on the quarterback keeper. Aggie Pride just driving back that Dell State Three-man front on the defensive DSU line to pick up line. about two or three yards, and that's all they needed uh, on that quarterback sneak to pick up the first down. Across midfield to the Delaware State 49-yard line. Renard from the shotgun, lone back in the backfield with him at his right side. Receivers split out on both sides, and the handoff is to Ma Martin. Martin around the corner, still on his feet, and gets belted down at the Hornets 35 yard line. Missed tackles there uh, gave uh, Martin a chance to pick up extra yardage. And that's the one thing that these running backs and receivers do well 
for A and T. You know, they they make you pay if you don't make that initial tackle. They're fast. They're about north and south. Not a whole lot of east and west out of their running backs or their wide receivers. Now the Aggies flood that right side with three receivers. Tight end on the left side of the offensive line. It's Martin again. He tries to go around the left side. Does so. Turns it upfield and is driven out of bounds right around the Delaware State 29-yard uh, line. Kiwan Selby and Bowman on the tackle. And not after he picks up enough yards. Pick up of six. Six yards on that Yeah, play. so it'll be second and four as they move the ball efficiently into Delaware State territory. The give this time is to Cartwright. Cartwright tries to go into the middle, gets only a yard up to the 28-yard line, and that will give North Carolina A&T a third down and three. Cartwright met by Alexander Monzo in the hole, linebacker. Uh, picks up maybe two yards on the play. And we saw some movement on the offensive line with a pass complete to the outside, but let's hold on and see what this is. It looked like maybe there was some movement on that offensive line. And if it is, it would be only the second penalty of the night against the Aggies. Offsides, defense, Offside that penalty's Delaware declined. State. Play so results in a first down. It is the 10th penalty of the night against the Hornets. Lamar Raynard just with the voice uh, and the reflections get to Dell State to jump off sides and it's gets a free play. Penalty was declined actually, so it's still only nine penalties on the Hornets. Uh, as they decline the penalty, the pass was completed to the 15 yard line. They'll take that yardage first down. And the handoff to the right side. Pretty good stop there right around the line of scrimmage by Delaware State on the cutback move by Martin. Now check that, uh, it was Cartwright on the carry. On the carry. Tried to uh, take it around and right out the area of the right tackle, cut it back upfield, but uh, the Hornets were having none of that. Strong safety Bowman in on that tackle for a very short pickup. Now quarterback Lamar Reynard looks to the sideline to get the play. Three receivers split out wide left. Renard throwing to the right side, complete. One tackle broken on the completion to Zachary Leslie, the wide receiver. Leslie works his way down to the Delaware State seven yard line. It'll be just short of the first down. Third down for North Carolina A&T, third and two. It's third and two, ball on the seven yard line. And it'll be Renard, the quarterback, on the keeper, and then coming in from behind as everything was stacked up, Cartwright came plowing in from behind, pushed the pile forward, and the Aggies get the first down. Dell State's going to start to shuffle in that heavy package and try to show you some semblance of a goal line stance here. Short field here for a quarterback like Renard who can throw the deep ball. Uh, and and uh, hasn't really had as much success with the shorter passes. But he is a good rollout quarterback as well. Let's see what he does. Hands it off on, fakes the handoff and keeps it and takes it into the end zone himself. They are very efficient on that fake. A lot of people thought that he had given it to Markel Cartwright and instead took it in five yards his, on his own. Del State doesn't have, well, he had Cavacante. I guess he was responsible for mirroring him. But. Fooled him. You saw Cavacante kind of looking like where was the ball uh, as, as uh, the quarterback, Renard, ran past him into the end zone. The extra point kick extra point is good. good. And the Aggies increase their Media lead timeout. to make it 27 to 6. We'll take a time out on the field. This is HSRN, the voice of HBCU Sports. Medium businesses just like mine. Well, now make someone happy. Make someone smile. Alumni Stadium in Dover, Delaware, North Carolina A&T now up to a 27-6 lead over Delaware State. 
here in the early part of the third quarter. Gary Lang, Mike Walker along with you with Hornets football. Noel Ruiz to kick off for North Carolina A&T. Kind of a line drive kick taken around the 10 yard line for Delaware State brought right up the middle and finding an opening on the return. That's Bryson Aline who had one for the distance last week and darn near broke that one, brought it out to the 40 yard line. That was a great touchdown saving tackle by uh, Kyan Howard from North Carolina a and If he doesn't wrap Bryson Aline up, he still might be running right now and getting ready to set up his touchdown uh, dance. Hornets with decent field position to start here, their first possession of the second game half. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to nine minutes and 50 you seconds. Really need to get something nine, going five, early zero. on here. The officials having Thank you. a little bit of a conference over the ball. And now they're ready to go. And everybody gets out of the way of harm as that ball is snapped. And the snap is to the quarterback, Keenan Black. Black hands off on first down. And it is no gain for Delaware State as they try to go around the right side. Nothing happening there. Look Aline like, stopped. Look like Bryant Dallas. You know, they all have the same structure. Waters, yeah. Aileen, and Dallas. So, you know, if you're not paying attention to the number, they all look exactly the same. And they run the same. 63 well is leaving the contest the for illegal equipment. No knee pads. So it's easy uh, to figure, to, to lose who's actually in the game. But the one good thing I like is they all complement each other. That similar running style is literally like having one running back, but three guys playing that same guy. Second down and 10 for the Hornets. Black fakes the handoff, looks downfield, tries to throw it, and looking on that pass for Trey Gross. Gross down there covered well, uh, just needed to be thrown to the other side. He threw it to his inside, and that's where the coverage was. Gross needed that one to the outside. Yeah, and, you know, Gross pretty much stuck to his pattern. There are times when you're a wide receiver, when you see the quarterback uh, maybe in trouble or the ball's not where it's supposed to be delivered. You have to come off that pattern. You have to make some big plays that, that needed to make a big play. Third down and 10 now for the Hornets. Keenan Black from the gun drops back. Looking for a receiver, throwing, complete, and right at the first down marker. Good catch made there by Kawana Kali. And let's see where they're able to mark his forward progress. I don't think the Hornets got a good spot there. They're marking it at the 49. He seemed to be right at the midfield stripe when he made the catch. You know, he did what he was supposed to do, Gary. He came back to the ball. And you know, he's got to make the reception and fight for the first down yardage. But, you know, as he gets older, he'll realize he's got to flatten that out and not come directly back. Delaware State going to go for it here on fourth down and a yard. And they'll hand it off, and they're not going to get it as the hit in the backfield. That Aggies defense up to the task there. Caught a lean in the backfield for a loss of a yard. They'll turn it over on downs on their own 48. Media timeout. Good choice, bad choice, Mike Walker. You know, at the end if they of, make it, it's a good choice, right? Yeah, you know, I'm one of these guys, you know, sometimes the offensive line owns a play. There are times when you have a confident offensive line, they'll turn to the sideline and tell the coach. QuickBooks and find on average $4,628 in tax savings. QuickBooks, backing you. Welcome back to Alumni Stadium in Dover, Delaware, North Carolina. A&T leading Delaware State. 27 to 6 here in the third quarter. It's Carson 10. Ball on the DSU 48 yard line. The Hornets just turned it over on downs to the Aggies at their own 48 yard line, and that's where North Carolina AT will start from. Lamar Renard, a good evening for him at quarterback for the Aggies. Works from the shotgun with three receivers split out wide on the left. Hands it off on first down. They go around the left side. Jamine Martin. Martin hit in the backfield, but still got, managed to get away and dive forward to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second and ten. Showing good effort, though, on, you know, essentially picking up no yards. Uh, it should have been tackled for a loss, but 
again, doing a good job of just getting back to the line of scrimmage. Hit back there, but slipped it. Now two receivers split out wide on each side. Everybody looks now to the sideline for the play. For the linemen, they just have to know the snap count. It's the backs and the receivers who were looking to see what they were going to do on second down and 10. Reynard fakes the handoff, drops back, wants to throw. It will be incomplete. And that's good coverage down there because it was into the hands of the intended receiver and then pulled out of his hands by the coverage man. Zachary Leslie had a reception on that play for a first down, but again, Kiwan Selby doing a good job of, of fighting that to the very last second, getting his arm up in there and dislodging the ball from Leslie's hands. Good job by Selby. Selby having a pretty good evening out there and a tough assignment with this quarterback and, and his core of receivers, but Selby's been up to the task on most of those plays. Third and ten now as the Hornets will try to stop the Aggies on this play. Reynard, pressure there, dumps off a little pass. This will go for negative yardage as they tried the screen to Markel Cartwright, and he was taken down behind the line of scrimmage. A loss on the play back to the 50-yard line. It'll bring up fourth and 12. Nice open field tackle by linebacker Alexando Lozano. Just doing a good job of Knowing his assignment, he's responsible for anybody releasing out of the backfield. He had his man, and there are times when Dell State has missed open field tackles, but Lozano doing a good job of wrapping him up and bringing him down. Hornets put 10 men up on the line of scrimmage. Bison Aline back at his nine to receive this punt, and they're putting pressure on this punter. It's a line drive that is away from Aline, and it hits and bounces quickly. It looked like it was going to make it into the end zone, and it didn't. It went out at the one-yard line. It was going toward the end zone, and then that funny bounce that Oblong can take, it was Media not a out. true bounce forward. It just had a little bit of an angle, and when it hit, after a couple of bounces, it angled over to the sideline, out at the Hornets' one. It's a punter's dream. Every punter dreams about hitting that punt and having it roll out of bounds, you know, around inside the five-yard lines, and that's just a great punt uh, by Michael Rivers. <laughs> Alumni Stadium on the campus of Delaware State University in Dover, Delaware. North Carolina A&T enjoying a 27-6 lead over Delaware State here in the third quarter. Hornets trying to work out from their one-yard line, and they'll keep it on the ground, pick up maybe a yard on that dive forward. Yeah, but we do have a penalty marker on the play, and it's right at the line of scrimmage. Offsides, defense for 18. Five-yard penalty remains first down. This is only the second penalty of the game called against the Aggies. One in the first quarter, and it just cost them five yards here. It's a disciplined team, you know. You have to give them credit for that, that they haven't made any huge mistakes that have benefited Delaware State. They'll run it again here on second down. They picked up uh, some additional yardage there, and now the pile up, and people still surging forward even after the uh, whistle blows. Waters on the carry for the Hornets. Out to, for close to a yard to the seven yard line. It'll be second down. Second and four. Second and a long four. Yeah, the, the Hornets uh, got the benefit of that, that five-yard penalty, and they were able to replay first down. So now they've got a little bit of breathing room, a little bit of a mix-up there in the backfield, too, between the quarterback and the running back, and that broke that play apart. For the Hornets, Mike Waters, just not on the same page with quarterback Keenan Black. That play looked like Waters was already kind of winding that play back off of uh, the quarterback riding him into the hole, and it just created some confusion. The timing was off, and you know, A&T again, because they're not really worried about getting beaten deep by Dell State. They're just very aggressive inside of the box. They lost a the yard on the play. It's third down now and five. Black is going to be forced to throw the ball. There's the quick out on the right side and almost taken for a pick six by Timadre Abram, the defensive back. 
He saw what was coming there, cut in front of the intended receiver, unable to get high enough to make the, the interception. So with the penalty that Dell State got on that possession, you know, it's still, rel still basically a three and out, but at least they'll have a little bit more room uh, for the punting team. So the Hornets to kick again. And standing at midfield is the return man for North Carolina A&T, Derek Williams. And standing deep in his end zone to punt, Fidel Oromo Martinez. He needs one of those good distance punts this time. And this one off the side of his foot goes out of bounds at around the Hornets 33 yard line. They're going to mark it at the 30 yard line. So it must have hit inbounds and then bounced back, went out at the 30. Disaster on that kick. Just not a good job. And, you know, he wasn't really facing a whole lot of pressure from the defense. That was one of those that he could have kind of leaned into that and just let it fly off of his foot. But probably just a little bit too much into his windup. And yeah. the inaccuracy made it careen off the right side of his foot. Yeah, sometimes he hit a golf shot and you just try to put too much into it. And all of a sudden it shanks off to the side or, or hooks to the side. And... That was, that was kind of a, a shank there. 24-yard punt. Sets up the Aggies at the Hornets' 30-yard line. Defense needs to come up with a big stop here to stay in this game. Renard drops back, throws, left side, little screen pass, completed to Markel Cartwright. He skirts down the left side. Knocked out of bounds at the Delaware State 23-yard line. That's a pickup of seven. <coughs> I'm going to mark the line of scrimmage at the 24. So it's a gain of six to make it second and four. This crowd looking for some reason to, to cut loose and cheer here at Delaware State. And haven't seen it yet. The give to Cartwright. He goes around the left side, turns it upfield, and is brought down right around the 15, 16 yard line of Delaware State. Good for a first down for the Aggies. Justin Costello on the tackle there. Uh, but not, not before Cartwright picks up the first down. From the 16 yard line, Reynard. Some signals now. Backs, receivers. Look to the line of scrimmage. The tight end on the right side, the left tackle on the left side. Also look to the sideline to get the play. The rest of the guys just know they have to block. That's what they have to do. Fake handoff, the pass complete. He's going to pick up some yardage and still fighting for yardage. Still working his way down inside the Delaware State five-yard line. Zachary Leslie on the catch, and he just did not want to go down. Selby and Justin Castile, they had him, and you know they were both trying to actually create a situation where they could pull the ball out of his hands, but neither one of them tackled him. So as they're trying to fight for possession, Leslie's still running the ball, trying to pick up yards. First and goal for the A&T. Throw corner of the end zone as the players scramble a fight for the ball, and it's a touchdown for North Carolina A&T. Coverage was there, and there was kind of some hand fighting before the ball got there between both players. The catch made by the Aggies, uh, Justin Renard, uh, Zachary Leslie, rather, and uh, he managed to pull it away for the touchdown. Leslie's just a big target. It's one of those situations where your wide receiver is about maybe six to seven inches bigger than the guy who's covering him, and when you throw it up, usually the bigger guy wins that struggle. So the extra point kick is good. And we have just under three minutes left in the third quarter. As uh, the Aggies increase that lead now to 34 to six. Delaware State got hung up there on that punt that put them back at their own one yard line. And then the shank punt by Delaware State giving the short field to the Aggies, and they took full advantage of it. That's what a good team does. You get a break like that, you go down and, and you apply the, the killer. And, you know, this defense with Delaware State, they've been on the field quite a bit here in the second half, and 
you know, it's not even a fatigue situation because I don't think they're necessarily winded. But what happens is, you know, uh, guys start to lose their motivation. You know, they're not as excited as they were early in the game. And, you know, they start to give up a few more yards than they normally would. And then you find the defense is no longer engaged in the game. So, you know, it's imperative that the offense do something right now to create some spark, to get some energy, some life back into the Hornet side of the sideline. Kickoff by North Carolina A&T. This one is a little bit short, taken at the 10-yard line on the far side of the field by Delaware State. And brought back across the field, up across the 30-yard line, dragged out of bounds after crossing the 32-yard the 30-yard line. Teron Selby on the return. Started off on the right side of the far side of the field and then brought it across the field. Not running laterally, was picking up yardage as he came across. Just looked for a place where he could turn it up, and it never happened. Good individual effort. None of the lanes were established on the side of the ball that he initially tried to run in. What he did what an athlete will do, you know, try to extend the play, see if he can change direction and pick up a couple of blocks. And he gives them pretty decent field goal position to start this crucial, crucial possession. From the 32-yard line, first and 10, Hornets. Keenan Black trying to get something going on this possession. And hold on. We have a penalty marker and a whistle. Delay game. Offense number Delay five. Delay game by Delaware five yard State. Penalty. Still first down. Going to cost them five yards back to the 27-yard line, and we'll start them off with a first down and 15. It's becoming too common for Delaware State University to have something good happen only to be followed by something bad happen. Another one of those penalties that puts them in a hole. Yeah, it was a nice 22-yard kick return and, and then the five-yard penalty, and that doesn't help. And they're playing a running game. They're, they're still trying to run the football as they give it to Bryant Dallas. And Dallas picked up a yard out to the 28. Hornets have not had much of a passing game on the season. They do have some good running, but when you're down by 28, you have to be able to throw the ball a little bit. And now Black with the long snap count. Takes the snap, drops back, looks. Right side, nobody open. Comes back left side, nobody open. Finds an open receiver as coming back to the ball was Trey Gross. Trey Gross having a pretty good evening here for Delaware State. Making a catch. Looks like he'll be just a yard short of the first down. Officials timeout for an injury. He's a big target. He's a sophomore, 6'4", 200 pounds. So he's the type of receiver that, you know, they want on Dell State side of the ball. We have a Delaware State player down, one of the offensive linemen. The opportunity for us to remind you that the DSU postgame show on HSRN is brought to you by American Spirit Federal Credit Union in Newark, Middletown, and Dover. Hoping it's another one of those cramping situations and not something that's ligament or tendon related. And the way they're stretching his leg right now, we're hoping that it's just a cramp. Training staff's out quickly to uh, attend to that lineman who was shaken up on the play. We have been unable to, to see his number and determine who it is that is down. And you know, observing, uh, and, and this is a, a fairly warm evening here in Dover, Delaware for the first weekend in October. Maybe a chance to see what happened here as uh, shaken up on the play. It was Antelli Moley. RJ, he likes to be called RJ Moley. Still down on the field. And you can see that, that he got uh, pushed back on the play. You would not expect on a Saturday evening in the first week of October in Dover, Delaware, for it to be 72 degrees. Not only is it 72 degrees, look again there uh, for our television viewers at what happened to Molly on that play. Seems like it's, he just collapsed under the, the rush of big yeah. Sh Shamari Wallace. Wallace just driving him back, and I don't know if his leg buckled or if he twisted his knee, but I didn't see anything other than a normal pass rush. Just landed very awkwardly when he, he fell. Is sending out the other big bodies to help him off the field. Yeah. 
And this is a huge loss for Delaware State because they're already extremely thin at the offensive line positions. So there's, there's really not a whole lot of next man up when it comes to that offensive line. Molly, a transfer from De Anza Junior College uh, from out in California. A lot of junior college conferences out there. He played in the Bay 6 Conference for the Dons. Born in American Samoa, was the team captain of the football team out at De Anza. And then comes in here to Delaware State, where he's a uh, criminal justice major. Well, if he needs to investigate what happened on that last play, you let him know we have the evidence. The, the tape is there to be seen. Here's the set as we come back to action here. It's third down and a yard to go for Delaware State from their own 41-yard line. And Keenan Black goes under center. We haven't seen that happen often. Defense almost came over on the snap count there. A little bit of a move, movement forward, but uh, not enough. And Black keeps it, still scrapping for yardage. And did they blow the whistle? The officials looking and, and saying, no, we blow the whistle, because one of the A&T players came out of that scrum with the football and ran to the end zone. But, and the big but, Sam Blue, the Aggies' defensive end, had stripped the ball out, but the whistle had blown. Now the question is, how far did Keenan Black go before they called the play dead? Didn't look like he got that many yards on the initial push, so I'm, I'm very interested in seeing where they're going to spot this ball. Yeah, will it be fourth and inches, or will it be third and one? And we're getting another look at it. Uh, the whistle had blown by the time uh, Sam Blue pulled that ball away and ran downfield with it. And the officials just kind of turned and watched and said, you know, we got a timeout here while we're doing our thing. Go ahead and run. The ruling on the field is Sam that there Blue was an inadvertent whistle while the ball was loose. The result of the play is a and recovery. So they're saying the ball had not Previous been play dead. is under review. Sam Blue, well, the initial call, they're saying, was that... Uh, the ball had not been blown dead, and Sam Blue took it away cleanly. Now the play is apparently under review. Blue has had kind of a, an unusual career here. Uh, he's a transfer from Scar uh, Rutgers, but he originally committed to play at Georgetown on an academic scholarship, but decided then to go to Rutgers to play football. He didn't have any playing time at Rutgers, and so he then transferred to North Carolina A&T. Starting to see a whole lot of guys in the college ranks taking control of their situation and making decisions that, quite frankly, five, six years ago, you know, they weren't making. You know, you've got guys leaving for playing situations. Let's see what we got here. We got one more look here on the television side. One official standing right there and pointing and saying the play was dead. And... Uh, but the call on the field initially was that the ball, the play had not been dead when it was taken away by Blue. And, and now uh, another look for those watching on television. We'll get to, to see that one more time as the quarterback surges forward. And now the umpire comes in, and the umpire there from the back, he's acting like the ball is dead right there. But Sam Blue had taken it out at that point and went to the end zone with it. Now, if they'll let him have the touchdown because we did hear whistles around that time, which means nobody was going to chase him to the end zone. The play is under review. Referee Robert Frazier is taking a look at it. Chance for us to remind our listeners and viewers to need tickets to an event, go to magiccitytickets.com. Magic City Tickets are your tickets to the world. Next week, we'll travel with the Hornets on HSRN to the nation's capital where they will play Howard University. 
and that's always a boy. I'll tell you some some years here against the Bison, where things got really testy here at Alumni Stadium. If there's a, a, a natural rival that Delaware State University has, it would probably would be Howard University. You know, when I used to go here. There were a lot of guys who were also recruited by Howard, the same guys who ended up going uh, to Dell State. And, you know, a lot of times they'd be playing games and they would, we would be playing games and guys would know each other on the other side of the ball because they went to the same high school. So Howard's always been a thorn in our side. They ruined the, our dreams a couple of times. I know we ruined quite a few of theirs. So I'm looking forward to the same spirited battle that we've had with them throughout the history of all of our battles. Good rivalry in the MEAC in football and for Delaware State, uh, you talk about back in the day, the rivalry was always with Coppin State. Had a chance to uh, talk about that a little bit with Eric Skeeters, the new head basketball coach at Delaware State, as he was our guest at halftime. Uh, and he spent some time as an assistant at Coppin State. He knows how that rivalry works with, with the Hornets. Old Fang Mitchell, he used to, I tell you, man, he's, he's one of those coaches who would have a terrible uh, regular season and somehow put together a championship team yeah. in tournament time. and. He could represent uh, the MEAC in the NCAA tournament with a 2-17 uh, and 17 or a 22 record. Somebody always managed to make it happen. You know, the and, and as Eric Skeeters can tell you, when you get there, anything could happen. As uh, history was made last year with UMBC, where he was an assistant coach, the first time that a number 16 seed in a region defeated a number one when UMBC knocked off the Cavaliers of Virginia in the first round. Coach Skeeters will accept that same magic here. At Delaware State he would University. love to have it. So. A long time here on this play review. Our viewers have seen it a number of times as I am sure referee Robert Frazier has seen it a number of times now. The problem is, I don't know, and, and here's the call, the call on the field was that it was a, a the ball was taken away. There's nothing conclusive to say that that didn't occur. There's nothing conclusive if it had been ruled that the quarterback was down. Nothing conclusive to change that either. You know, we're up here so we couldn't hear the whistles and the timing of the whistles are important. That's the important part. Is Robert Fraser able to hear the audio of the play and hear the whistle? Did the whistles occur before Sam Blue took it away? Well, they're sending the offense back out on the field, so maybe Delaware State got some advanced information about what this call is going to be. Or the maybe offense appears to be getting ready to go back out there. That could just be cockeyed optimism, too. You know, you don't want to tip your hand and <laughs> you send the defensive unit out, and all of a sudden the referee says, okay, now, you know, there's the call. But do they have to get every official to sign off on this call here? Yeah. Take the petition around and get everybody to sign off on it. you Dell State and you do retain possession of this ball. Uh, we've had plenty of times to, to discuss the situation. Well, uh, if it's Delaware State ball, they might have to bring the sticks in and measure to see if they got the first down, too, because where it is sitting right now, the tip of the ball is at the 47-yard the line, and that's where the Hornets have to get to for the first down. And we're going to see if we can get this call. After further review, the ruling on the field is corrected. The player was down prior to losing possession right, of the ball. Saying, okay, the ruling Delaware on the field State originally was line to that gain. quarterback will be uh, first and ten Black on the 42-yard line. Before the ball was taken by Sam Blue. They have affirmed that ruling. It is Hornets ball. And they're saying it was, they have, they're, they're starting to move the sticks. At least the, the box man has changed his stick, but the other first down markers have not moved. Now they're going to move them forward, I think. First, the officials have to go over and uh, explain their call to Sam Washington, the head coach of North Carolina A&T. So there's that conference up at the 40-yard line. 
on the far side of the field. Still haven't reset the first down marker, so there's a little confusion. Yeah, they the haven't so moved the, the chains, though the box man has made the indication of a first down. Now they'll move the chains. And you know why he's called the box man? The guy who has the marker with the number on it. Originally, that was a box around the pole, and it had one, two, three, and four on it, and he would turn that to the side of the field to indicate the down, the box man. Penalty marker on the play as Delaware State runs the ball up across to the 45 to the 46-yard line. So now, Mike Walker, if you ever get on Jeopardy and, and the final Illegal Jeopardy formation, question, offense, five men in the backfield. The illegal five motion penalty. in the backfield against Delaware State. That'll down. cost them five. If you ever get on Jeopardy and the question on final Jeopardy has to do with why is the guy called the box man? The real question should be how did Mike Walker end up on Jeopardy? That's the real question. <laughs> well, there's that too. <laughs> It'll still be first down for Delaware State as they move the ball back five yards. First and 15 from the Hornets, 37-yard line. <coughs> Keenan Black takes the snap from the shotgun, throws complete. Just a little bit of yardage on the play there as he gets it to the tight end, Isaiah Williams. He'll pick up four yards on the play to make it second and 11. Tell you what, when you're down to just about the end of the third quarter and you're under by 28 points, uh, a four-yard pass isn't going to help you a lot. Keenan Black looking for more on this one. He'll be sacked, taken down at the 35-yard line, and the Hornets will lose six yards on that play. It'll bring up third down and long. You know, just based on that play, those four-yard passes don't look so bad right now. No, it's better than a loss of six, and, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, they're just struggling right now. You know, the team just doesn't do anything well uh, consistently. They don't run the ball well. They have great running backs. Uh, but, again, it's a young offensive line that hasn't developed that chemistry that you need uh, to be good at uh, sustaining uh, blocks. And the third. <laughs> My stadium on the campus of Delaware State University in Dover, Delaware, where North Carolina A&T, as you can see, leads 34 to 6 over Delaware State as we are underway in the fourth period from Dover. Gary Lang, Mike Walker, bringing you the action. Glad you decided to spend part of your Saturday evening with us. It's not really a date or anything. It's just that we're here. And it will be Delaware State ball with a third down and 17 as we come back to action here in the fourth period. Keenan Black rolls straight back, drops back, throws complete to Bryson Aline. Aline, good yards after making that catch. A nice screen play, but they're going to come up short of the first down by about four yards. You know, it was a good call. The timing was right, but the execution was just a little bit off. You know, Bryson Aline didn't catch that cleanly. Didn't have an opportunity to kind of run that ball upfield and maybe look left or right to see if he could pick up additional yards. And that's the problem with Dell State. It just seems like the timing on all their plays, just a, maybe a second off. And they're going to go for it here on fourth down. Fourth and five for Delaware State. And Black's... They're just uh, uh, not not on the same page with his intended receiver there, Collie, as Collie went downfield and Black behind him. Fortunately, it was over the head of the defender who was trying for six. I think Black was looking just to pick up the first down. If you try. We return to Alumni Stadium at Delaware State University, 34 to six, the lead for North Carolina A&T over the Hornets. We're in fourth quarter of play here, and the Hornets for the second time have turned the ball over on downs in their own territory. 
Lamar Reynard having a good evening. Wants to go deep and get a bunch of them here. And it is broken up. Good coverage again. If there's one thing that has been consistent in maybe the last three games for Delaware State is their defensive secondary. They've been up to the task, and they have been challenged very often. Isaiah Small on that breakup. Doing a good job of just trailing the receiver and turning his head at the right time to pick up the ball. And all he's got to do is deflect it. He doesn't have to make an interception. Just deflect it to kill the play. Second down and ten. Reynard again, this time faking the handoff, rolling right side on the option, throwing, throws it out of bounds as his uh, man down there was covered again pretty well, and he just had to dump it off and get rid of it. Third down and ten. Big play for Delaware State right here. If they can create a situation where a t has to punt the ball, they'll give the offense another opportunity to get back on the field and get some sorely needed points on the scoreboard for Dell State. Of course, we remember what happened in a similar situation where the Hornets did force a punt, and then Michael Rivers put it out at the one-yard line because it's a good punting situation. Pressure was there, and the quarterback took a big hit as he let it go. Pass incomplete, Isaiah Hicklin, the intended receiver for the Aggies. Ramar, Reynard was hit pretty hard in the backfield by Alexandro Lozano, the linebacker. He was coming on the blitz, forced Renard backward, and then uh, as he let the ball go, he took a shot. Wasn't happy about it either. Did a little pile ticking with the ref, but the ref rec recognized it was all in the natural motion of making a tackle, so can't really penalize him for that. Michael Rivers set to punt again. He'd like a punt like the last one in a similar situation where he managed to angle it out at the one-yard line. This one keeps it in the center of the field, and it takes a Delaware State bounce and uh, handled by special teams player for North Carolina a Marquise Blue, a linebacker on the special teams, managed to keep that ball from bouncing back any further and uh, downed it there. So the Hornets will take it at their own 22-yard line. We'll take a timeout here. <laughs> Hornets ball from their own 22, first and 10 as uh, a big lead for North Carolina A&T and an incomplete, uh, completed pass to Ron Selby on the reception for the Hornets. That's gonna be an incomplete It'll be pass. an incomplete pass. That's what I thought initially, but Selby came up with it in his hands. So it remains 10 yards to go and brings up second down on the incompletion. Tough night for Keenan Black. Trying to find receivers open. He's thrown behind a few and over top a few. That time he's almost picked for six. You might as well run to the end zone. You almost had the ball with you. Mac McCain the third, the defensive back stepping in front there and getting in front of Trey Gross and almost getting himself a touchdown. But you can see why he's on the defensive side of the ball because that hit him in a very dangerous place, both of his hands. Uh, for Black, he just ducked a bullet. Again, you know, a and is not intimidated by be, being beaten deep by Delaware State University. So these defensive backs, they're not even going to peel backwards uh, once these receivers are released. They're just going to wait and look at the quarterback. Black on the keeper. Runs forward. Taken down short of the 30-yard line. It'll bring up fourth down and long yardage. About five yards to go for Delaware State. And even though... Uh, the clock is against them, and so is the scoreboard. This time, they will have to punt it away. Just too deep on their side of the field, and you don't want to <coughs> serve up essentially what's field goal position to a and As much as they'd probably like to go for it, the situation doesn't really allow them to. Fidel Romo Martinez punting this evening for the seventh time. He's racking up a lot of punting yardage this season. 
taken at the 17-yard line. A little bit of a return room. Oh, wow, what a big hit all of a sudden. And we have a penalty marker coming in with the hit. Now, look clean. Look clean on the return by Kashan Baker. We'll wait to see what this penalty is. Initial indication it may be against North During Carolina the return, a and t and Illegal block in the back. Return team number illegal seven. Illegal block in the back. Only their third penalty, penalty of the in night. The run. That's how you win football games. You play mistake free. Brian Cavacante, he's kind of limping off the field right now. He was involved in on the tackle. The big wood was laid by the long snapper, uh -huh. Michael Dunham. But Cavacante was right in his back pocket, and I think he might have been the guy who was hit from behind. So he's limp limping off the field, but he jogged off. So hopefully it's not the type of injury that will keep him out of the game. Michael Dunham, a six foot 200-pounder from Gainesville, Florida, came flying in there. Correction, and, number uh, 85. Made 85 that big with a block in the back. Khalil Carter showing up now as quarterback for North Carolina A&T, getting some game action, faking the handoff and bootlegging it out to the 18-yard uh, line. Uh, gain of two yards on the play by the quarterback, Carter. You know, you wonder, is uh, Rain it on the sideline? Because he, he got up a little gimpy after being hit by uh, Lozano on that last play he was in. Or are they just protecting him because uh, of the score? Carter coming into this game, 17 of 29 passing for 174 yards, two touchdowns. This guy can make things happen. He makes it happen on a handoff there. That's some power running, a refusal simply to go down on that carry by uh, Jamain Martin. Carter also a threat to run. You have to watch him. Fakes the handoff. He will run with the ball, and it's going to be pretty close. I think he has the first down. He had to get to the 29. He got to the 30. Carter on the quarterback keeper. First down, Aggies. So the Aggies pick up a first down there. Here's a stat for you, uh, Mike Walker. Khalil Carter had one touchdown pass in 2017. It came against the Hornets. It's Let's hope his streak ends and he doesn't have another one today. He would like to put up another one. Move that ball downfield and eat up a good chunk of this clock here in the fourth quarter. It's Martin on the carry around the right side. Loose ball, still loose, and it looks like it'll be the Aggies with all the luck in the world going for them, not only playing without penalties, but ball squirts out and right to an Aggies player. <coughs> For positive However, yardage, too. We have a penalty marker back at the 35 yard line. Holding so that offense, all might be number 77. Not. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. And it's a 10 yard penalty against Repeats North Carolina AT, just down. their fourth of the game now. You want to get them for holding? It's a, a pretty well-coached team and a pretty good, a pretty well-disciplined team that can play that much without penalties. And when they you, are the visiting team, so we can't, you know, accuse them of getting <laughs> home, uh, home cooking. Team favoritism. Yeah. <laughs> So now they have a first down and 15 from their own 25-yard line. And a timeout called by North Carolina a and Timeout. North Carolina a and That is their well, first team of, timeout of, of the home half. Games, this will also be a media timeout. We don't have another home game for two weeks. Uh, it would be uh, three weeks, actually. Uh, next week. The Hornets of Delaware State travel to Washington, D.C. to take on Howard and then down to South Carolina to face those Bulldogs of South Carolina Central. Home, next home game is uh, October 27th against North Carolina Central. South Carolina Central, a winner over Morgan State this afternoon. <coughs> 
Hornets only with four home games on the schedule this season. And uh, Mike Walker, head coach Rod Milstead, told us that's not going to happen anymore. He wants a more balanced schedule. He wants people to come here to play the Hornets rather than seven on the road. That makes it tough. Yeah, it does, you know, and uh, I think he's also going to maybe get away from some of these games where they have to face, you know, superior talent early in the season. The big D1 schools yeah, or, you know, or the mid-majors even. Yeah, we just might want to, you know, scale that back just a little bit uh, and maybe play guys in our caliber or maybe, you know, we have one of those what they call them money games and bring somebody in here and just help these guys get in the process of understanding what it takes to win and how to win. So... Coach has got his work cut out for him, but at the end of the day, uh, a lot of these guys who he inherited, you know, they're going to, you know, have to adjust their playing style uh, and adapt to the vision that Rod Milstead has for them. Some of them are going to be able to do it. He's building foundation right now. A lot of good players out there. Mm -hmm. They just don't make a good team as we speak. But and the scheduling in recent years, of course there's money involved in it, and it's been good money for Delaware State, but it's also an expensive proposition to make some of these trips, uh, to house everybody, the, the transport and all the logistics of it. They would like to be at home for a few more of those, maybe bring in uh, a FCS school from, from another conference, and, and a Division II school that could come in here and play. Sure. You know, and there are enough of those programs out there, you know. But, you, again, when you Dell State, uh, you know, we got to take care of some things at home first. You know, we got to get the Alumni Association on board and get them behind the program and fill in some of the gaps that, you know, the university may struggle to fill. All right, back to action here. North Carolina A&T with a first and 15 from their 25-yard line. Khalil Carter in at quarterback. Throws the quick out to the left side. Caught by Zachary Leslie. He's still on his feet and finally goes down well after the whistle. Hey, you know, you just have to, at a certain point when the whistle blows, let go of the guy. And now it gets a little testy as people making some bad decisions on the field. When the, and now we finally have the penalty marker. When the whistle blows, there's no reason to take a guy and throw him to the ground. Totally on call for him. It'll be addressed. I bet. If there is one thing that Coach Rod Milstead is instilling in his team this year, it is some discipline. And that kind of thing just you can see from the body language. I, I would not want to be getting the Milstead stare uh, from the sideline for whoever committed that infraction. Now, we did have a penalty marker. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct foul, defense number 93, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. That is number 93's first unsportsmanlike conduct, conduct foul of the contest. Jason Smith be an automatic for Delaware first down. State, and that's a 15-yard penalty giving the Aggies a first down. You don't have to give them first downs. They get them on their own. Right. And, uh, again, just not a good decision, you know, at a, a critical time in the game. You know, there's still minutes on the clock. And, you know, coach is looking at character now. He wants to see how these people finish off the game. First and ten now for the Aggies from their 43-yard line. Since it was a dead ball foul after the play, it was stepped off from the yardage gained. This time it's Mikel Cartwright. And Cartwright around the right side found some running room and took it down to the Hornets' 44-yard line. Started off to the left side of the offense and wound it back, and there was really no contain by Delaware State, so he bounced it outside and picked up enough yards for a first down. Aggies using as much of the clock as they can here, taking their time between plays and running the ball to keep the clock running as well. Enjoying that lead now around the right side. It's Martin. Martin upended. Do we have another loose ball? Yes, and an Aggie picked it up and got knocked out of bounds with it. Another save for North Carolina A&T. Picked up by Zachary Leslie. Ball hawks are ball hawks. 
Really not the field as a fumble out of bounds forward. The ball will be placed in the spot of the fumble. Second down. Cal State just not getting the breaks. You know, when you're a winning team, you get those types of breaks. The yeah. ball somehow bounces into your hands when it isn't supposed to. You can see it what it's doing for A and T. You know, they just seem to be getting all the breaks. All the 50-50 balls are coming up their way. Second down and five. It'll be a, the quarterback on the keeper to the 36-yard line, Khalil Carter. A couple of ball fakes and Carter just moseying down the center of the field. Picked up some good yards on that play. He's going to make it a third. I'll say about a long two. This is a senior quarterback who's had a fair amount of playing time at North Carolina A&T. So he knows what to do when he gets in there. This is not a young guy just getting some playing, some experience. He knows how to play. On the carry, Cartwright, right side, has the first down and more as he smashes his way to the 21-yard line. Aggies picking up another first down. That Aggie offensive line just starting to dominate right now. You know, they're providing great passing protection and they're dominating the Dell State defensive line on the run plays, and now they're just picking up you know, first down after first down against the Hornets. Carter from the shotgun again. As some clean jerseys get into this game, even even though they're playing on turf, jerseys get a little jersey, dirty. Markel Cartwright trying the left side and may have actually lost a little bit of yardage on that play. Uh, I think they're going to, yeah, they're going to move the stick back uh, up a half a yard. Call it second down, a short 11. Good tackle by David Bowman on that play, the freshman out of Milford. Carter looks things over. Three receivers split out on the right side. A lone back in the backfield who gets the ball, and it's handed off to Unique Johnson. Johnson ahead for a couple of yards to the 19-yard line. Third down, third down. Third down and eight for North Carolina A&T. It's third and eight. With your a and you don't want to be accused of running up the score, but you want to keep possession of the ball. So this could be one of those situations where they might throw the ball just to try to pick up the first down. As we slip under six minutes left in the football game, Carter on the keeper. Hit at the line of scrimmage and stopped. And now a late flag thrown by the linesman, Stephen Green. Carter stopped well short of the first down. And I'm not sure what that flag was about. They might hit Niebau with targeting. He kind of led on that last second tackle. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness with Personal targeting. Foul. Defense number two. A previous play Josh, will be under Josh review. Niebauer called for targeting. And a timeout now called by Delaware State. A delightful, a real, really a, an evening you can't complain about weather-wise here in Dover, Delaware. And let's watch here for that targeting. And we're getting a couple of looks on the TV replay. And that's a tough one. Yeah, that's an iffy call because, you know, you got a quarterback who's lowering his, his helmet to try to pick up additional yards. You got a defender who's trying to engage him uh, there, of to course prevent him from picking up additional yards. So, you know, I didn't see the intent where he just tried to use his head as a weapon. It was just more like yeah. the action of tackling. The big uproar on, on Friday was over a play in the Thursday night NFL game where a running back lowered his head to deliver a blow and knocked out the defensive player. People wanted to know why the Patriots running back 
didn't get penalized for it. Yeah, that's uh, something the league is going to have to review because if the whole thing is about protecting players, they have to provide protection for the defensive players. And the rule as was well. actually established. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. That they could call Number it two is disqualified players. from the contest for targeting. That whoever initiated contact. So Niebauer is out. He's been tossed for the game, so he won't be able to play until the fourth quarter next week. That is the second ejection this year for Delaware State on a targeting call. And it's the same person, too, so clearly he has some issues uh, with targeting. After further review, the ruling on the call, field though. is confirmed. The first one Number two is, is the, disqualified uh, for targeting. Buffalo game. It will Buffalo be first game. and yeah, that, goal. Yeah, that was a legitimate call. That one, eh, a little questionable but it's cost him. The ball is now at the Hornets nine yard line. First and goal for A&T. The Aggies with that 28 point lead. Coach Rod Milstead quickly run, runs down to the linesman. And Delaware State. Timeout. That is their first team timeout of the contest. This will be a 30 second timeout in length. Be a 30 second timeout 30 for seconds. Delaware State here. Does he want clarification? Does he want to talk to somebody? Or does he just want to get his defense uh, set for the uh, goal line stand that they're getting ready to have to go to? I think it's more of, a, of a just kind of get everybody together and try to put them on the same page here for the end of this football game. It seems like the whole defense is coming out there, Gary, you know, that's, on this timeout. And that's not Coach Mil Milstead with them either. That, uh, that looks like the assistant head coach and defensive coordinator, Mark James, who has the defensive unit out there. Right. I didn't see him yelling on that, that particular team huddle. I, I looked at him coaching and talking. He's probably trying to inspire his players to finish off strong. You can stop them right here. Don't have to give this touchdown up if you play good defense. And, and that's smart coaching. You know, that you, you don't want to beat the players up at this point in the game. It serves no purpose. There's the handoff for left side. Penalty marker goes into the line. I suspect we may have that rare North Carolina A&T penalty Holding called on that offense, play. Number 75, 10-yard penalty. Repeat first Deep down. Johnson on the carry for the Aggies. Following the penalty is first and goal. Ball on the 19-yard line. A 10-yard penalty holding against North Carolina A&T moves the ball back to the 19-yard line. It remains first down, goal to go. Defensive end Christian Johnson got really good penetration on that last play. That kind of disturbed the timing of the whole run, and that allowed uh, that Dell State defense to come up and provide some run support. Khalil Carter would like to get the ball into the end zone, get himself a touchdown on the season here. Hands it off on first down to Johnson. Johnson up to the 17-yard line. Picks up two on the play to make it second down. Hornets defense wants to try to keep this North Carolina A&T team out of the end zone. A moral victory of sorts if they can. And field goals, as we've seen this season, are no guarantee. Here's Carter from the shotgun. Man in motion. Pitches it out to Martin. Martin around the right corner. And up to the 11-yard line. Again, the smallest man out there on the defense, David Bowman, comes up with the big tackle. He's been all over the field today. I mean, he's made some huge plays, especially out there in space. And, again, that's another good tackle by the freshman from Milford. Third and goal from the 11-yard line now for the Aggies as they make some substitutions late in the game here. Getting some experience for some of their players. The opportunity to play those guys who have to work so hard in practice when you have an opportunity like this as a head coach. You just like to give them a reward and a chance to play. 
Here's Carter on third down. Can't find a man open. Scrambles with the football. Down to the five-yard line. Taken down at the five on a good pursuit tackle by David Bowman, the guy you were just talking about, all over the field. You know, look, I'm, I'm excited about his play, but whenever your strong safety is making a whole lot of tackles, that's usually not a good sign. Yeah, you don't want your safeties being your leading tacklers in a game. But he's shown he's a, he's a short tackler. He can, you know, make tackles in space. Uh, and he's only going to get better. And, you know, there's so many positive things to be taken from today's game in this season. Some of the names we're mentioning, Gary, these are guys who have two and three more years here at the program. So it's one to grow on, as we used to say back in the day. Fourth and goal from the five. Carter throwing, end zone, touch, no, incomplete. Just a little bit too far in front of the intended receiver, and the Hornets hold at their five-yard line. They'll take it over on downs. First time tonight they've turned it over on downs twice offensively. This time the defense comes up. Jordan McDaniels, the intended receiver, just couldn't come up with the pass, so Delaware State offense will have an opportunity with just a couple of minutes left on the scoreboard, Gary, to see if they can hit pay dirt and at least try to cosmetically change the look of this game. Keenan Black will lead his team back to the field with under three minutes to play here in Dover, Delaware. It's been a tough evening for the Hornets. They kind of knew they had their work cut out for them against this North Carolina A&T team that won the conference last year and has been a dominant force on first down. The handoff is to Bryant Dallas. Dallas. Dallas on the carry. To the seven yard line. Pick up of a couple. Brings up a second down. And you see here, uh, it's one of the things we talked about. This is not a passing team by the Delaware State Hornets. They are a running team. And so even in this situation, they're not throwing the ball. There's a big hit. Knocked out of bounds. Tay Washington. Ty Washington hit hard, knocked out of bounds, picked up four yards on the play, out to the 11-yard line. Third down. Almost forced to throw the ball here, though. Almost. There's the pitch out. Lost! Still loose, and it'll be Aggie's ball at the Hornets' four-yard line. Pitch out just a little bit behind the running back, and that turned into maybe the worst disaster of the evening. The miscue between the quarterback and the running back, and, you know, worst-case scenario, Dell State should be punting right now, but they put A&T in a situation where they're almost forcing them to score. The scramble for the ball, and unable to get position to try to get on top of it. Giving the ball over to the Aggies. They get it right back. They gave it up first uh, on, on a fourth and goal at the five-yard line. Now they have first and goal from the four. Jalen Fowler now comes in at quarterback for North Carolina A&T. He'll hand it off on first down. Still fighting for yardage in the middle there as we'll try to pick up who carried that ball? It was Unique Johnson. So the third quarterback of the game in for North Carolina A&T. Jalen Fowler, redshirted all of last year. So this is really the opportunity here for Fowler to get some playing time. Two, the 6'2", 236-pound redshirt freshman. Two years ago was playing for the Dorman Cavaliers in Inman, South Carolina. <coughs> Second and goal, a little bit high snap off to the right. Johnson tries that middle again and nothing happening there for him. Stopped at the three, lost a yard on the carry. Brian Cavacante and a whole host of Hornets in on that particular tackle. Ballard looks to the sideline now to get the play on this third down. Not much for tonight, but if this Hornet defense can hold here and keep 
North Carolina A&T out of the end zone. What a lift it could be for them. Two stops from the inside the five. And now the Hornets will call a timeout. Timeouts. Delaware State. With just 26 seconds to play. Half. This will be a 30-second timeout in length. 30-second timeout. As uh, this, this will pretty much put the cap on things for this evening. For Mike Walker, it could be a, a big lift for the Hornets' defense to be able to come out of here on two consecutive possessions where a and had the ball from the five or inside if they can keep them out of the, the end zone in this last 26 seconds. Sure. I mean, you have to find your victories in these type of situations. So anything positive you can point to, anything that could be motivation, that's great. You know, we saw a lot of good individual plays uh, by people tonight. Saw a lot of good tackling. I saw some good efforts as far as running the ball is concerned. Some good special teams play. But, again, not a total team effort. You know, when the offense does something well, the defense doesn't. When the defense does something well, the offense struggles. Uh, and, again, all three sectors of the game, all three aspects, just they're, they're not all performing at the level that they need to perform in order for Dell State to come away with a victory. Here's Fowler on third and goal from the three. Fowler rolls left side, pitches it out. Johnson taken down at the five-yard line. They'll lose more yardage on the play. It brings up fourth down and goal. Fourth down! And I don't know if we'll see another play here, Mike. Down to 10 seconds left on the clock. And both teams walking slowly to the area of the line of scrimmage. And that will wrap it. That's the, That's the, the end of the ball game. Score. North Carolina A&T comes away with a 34-6 victory over Delaware State. We're going to take a break here and come back with our post-game program. Time out on the field where the game is over. The clock has stopped. Nothing else happening. This is HISRN, the voice of HBCU Sports. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN3.